Uh, are we live? Uh, are we live? Seems good. Aziz, live. Veldak, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It does indeed seems good. Um, so yeah, we'd pretty much finished uh, converting our old base. Oh, there's a bunch of old stuff up here still. Um, to, well, not base, more like outpost, uh, to the new standard. I do have a couple of patches I need to run to probably all of our outposts, depending on whether I can do it without, uh, adding more combinators or anything. Um, but basically, a mistake that I picked up is realizing um, if we have multiple, well no, not even if we have multiple for each type, uh, with the way we've set this up, we would need to, depending on which ship, uh, which destination the ship is dispatched to, we need to send a uh, signal 0, signal 1, signal 2, etc. to this uh, central memory cell to keep track of how much spaceship we've got on the way to each outpost. Uh, and at the outposts themselves, uh, we need to send back a signal when the ship is on its way back to subtract that number. Um, unless we wanted to not subtract that until the ship gets all the way back, but I don't think I want to do it that way. Um, the problem is, I mean, it's not strictly necessarily a problem, but I'd strongly prefer it. Um, if we could avoid having, um, n number of pairs of combinators at each one of these launching areas, launching slash drop-off areas, um, for however many outposts we're going to end up having, I don't want to have to have another couple of combinators at each one of our drop-off areas. Uh, so thinking it through a little bit, I think I can do it here, right next to where we're already going to have the one centralized uh, n number of combinators for each um, outpost. Twisty, Fraser K, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. So what I need to do... Uh, let me just check how this is going. Go drop this off. While I'm trying to figure it out. Um, so what I want to do... Is... Send... The information... It's going to be implicit, we're, we're already going to know if we're sending it from an outpost. But if we're sending it from a launch slash drop-off, uh, we need to send the information for how much spaceship we're sending and to which destination. Um, and then instead of decoding, this destination means it's signal zero, um, here, we'll do it up here. So if I send, I might need yet another signal receiver at this rate. I was hoping to squeeze it in on this one, but we've already got red and green. Green wire is input for the memory cell, and red wire is received from the outposts. Um, I think I could just take this green wire that we're already using. And that's going to go through our decision-making stuff. Uh, and then under certain circumstances, it'll... Well, not under certain circumstances exactly, but it, it'll take all the information, which is to say uh, what amount of spaceship we're launching and at which outpost which we know we can already get from here. Um, 
And then we just do this logic right here. Up here, so that we don't have to duplicate it every time. Alright, do we have some more space platform scaffolding lying around up here? We have 3.1k, that's quite a bit. Let's put it in the scaffolding tray. Um, where is it? And should be able to get rid of these now. That should be even enough. Oh, what is all this crap? Why is there used life support in the scaffolding train? What? That's just rude. Sergeant Dog, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's just empty it, and then we'll refill it from scratch. Wait, why do we... Oh, I remember. I was going to say, why do we have regular cargo wagons? It's because, for some reason, if the train is on auto, um, the roboports don't work from the space cargo wagons that have the higher capacity. Very unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, we already have all our space platform plating in here. Um, so I probably want to extend this about this far out. We'll trim it down if we don't need that much. And this, this one can actually go anywhere. I don't want to cut and paste it. Uh, I think I'll use Piccadillys to move it around so that we don't lose the signal timing. Might be a bit weird. Um, but let's park our scaffolding train over here. Drink copious water because it's ridiculously warm. And get back to emptying out this old outpost. Thankfully, all of the outposts that... Well, it's not really a coincidence or anything, but all of the outposts that we're working with so far are quite close. So it's not difficult to go and patch them to iron out the bugs thus far. There we go. So I should be able to trim the surface now, although it's not going to be that much of a trim. For the millionth time, I'll double check. We have confirmed hostile extinction. And there we go. That's going to make the save file just that little bit smaller. And maybe save a minuscule amount of UPS. Pretty negligible, too. Okay. Oh yeah, the solid fuel actually goes into... I think it's fast... In, uh, fast uh, speed modules. Yeah, tier 1 speed module needs 10 solid fuel, so this will get all used up when we send it back to the mall. Uh, assuming we could set it all back to the mall. You know, if I really need to, I could park my liquid rocket fuel spaceship here just to transfer fuel. Or we do seem to have a bunch of solid rocket fuel lying around as well. Anyway. Anyway. So when the ship launches, I think... We always want to send on the red signal R for reset. Um, to reset the memory cell that holds on to the information that an outpost sends for a request. We're not going to change that. 
And it has nothing to do with the green. Alright. So our goal here used to be send on the green wire. Um, positive signal zero one two, whichever outpost it is, that's the destination for how much spaceship we're sending there. Uh, excuse me. Instead, I think our goal should be to send S plus whatever S is plus uh, planet orbit, moon orbit, whichever. Except I don't want to have to add four combinators or whatever it is um, for all the different types of destination. Planet orbit, moon orbit, asteroid field potentially. Uh, this wouldn't include anomaly though. So I kind of want to pass through everything on that green wire. Which is going to include... Wait, why isn't there a just... Oh, because this isn't ready yet. Um... Do we not have an outpost requesting a ship? That's kind of strange. Let's check what our ships are up to. This is, of course, full. There's no ship here. And this is full. There's no ship here. Let's see. Spaceships. Iron Hauler 1 and 2 and 4 are all waiting to drop off. This one's waiting to drop off purple. We've got two waiting to drop off purple, actually. And number 3 is still in motion. Uh, it's going to get more purple. Okay. There's our autosave. Hurry up. Mach schnell bitte, danke schon. Okay. Uh, so shouldn't the outposts... Did I, like, disable the outposts or something? They should be trying to send a signal... To say, please come and pick up from this outpost, right? Oh. Yeah, not for this one. That makes sense, actually. Oh, for both of them. Both of our drop-offs are full. Really? Hmm. It's kind of working pretty well for the moment. But we need to manage... Um, Assuming we can't keep things saturated, we need to manage where the spaceship go, uh, spaceships go. Uh, Alright, let me just double check uh, what information we're going to be sending through. So it's... It's what? Um, the address... And the stuff we're asking for. That's pretty much it. And maybe a time signal will get passed through as well or something, but that can be ignored. Um, and also how many core fragments. Input signals. Yeah, so it's going to be the number of core fragments we've got here. Plus the stuff that we're asking for, plus our address. Okay. Is that going to cause any problems if I pass all of that through? So I can make it more generic, use fewer combinators. Uh, I don't think so. So I need to pass everything on the green wire through here. But only when we receive the S signal from here. And only when it comes through a 
Uh, well, I was going to say only when it comes through a... Why am I blanking? I think I know why I'm blanking. It's too hot. Uh, pulse generator. That sends this through for only one tick. Um, so if we receive S for one tick, we want to pass through S, but also whatever comes through on the screen wire. How would we do that? If S greater than zero output everything? That's pretty easy, actually. Um, and then we just don't need this one. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna pass through... The address, and S, and some other stuff. Um, yeah, that seems fine. If S greater than zero, output everything input count. And I'm going to have to go pick that up. And then at the brain... Uh, let me just pick a dollies this out of the way. I'm gonna leave that up the top left. I mean, I could have it floating on its own little island just to show that it's, uh... It's actually kind of separate from all of this. This is probably fine. Alright, I need to get back there. I guess I'll leave this mess here for now. Um, that's not going to be that big of a deal. Oh, why aren't we launching? Launch on cargo full, launch delayed, waiting for target landing pad to empty. Uh, I could just ride this back to the barrel drop off on Hagen, assuming it's about to empty. Which is going to take a little while. I'm not sure why, but... Oh. I was going to say this has a stack size of 1. I misread it. It's just a regular filter inserter, because normally we'd just be dropping... Cargo rocket sections and space capsules out of the cargo landing pad here. So it's going to take its sweet time emptying that automatically. Um... So maybe let's ride our spaceship back, which will only take a couple of minutes. You can orbit. I'll be spending more fuel than I need to by taking the iron ship back, but who cares? We should start refilling this thing anyway. Andy Gaming, Philip B, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Random question, are the orbits limited like the planets? Uh... Oh, as in there's an edge to them? I don't think so. I don't know. I doubt it. Alright, what's our ETA to get home? Uh, probably like a minute or two once we... Get up to speed. Maybe I should send the construction ship over here. That'd be easier. Oh, construction train, rather. Once again, we need to let the bots jump back in. That's why I added the one second of inactivity there. And we can get the nice balanced 50 bots per cargo wagon. Which we can only do by doing it in sync by a known state like everything is empty. Fantastic. This is all a bit more than we need right now. It's fine. Why did we put in two more construction bots? 
Um, that was weird. That was very weird. Whatever. What's done is done. Fuck yourself over here, please. Okay, so what we're going to receive on the green wire is... Let me just put this somewhere else. It's just a little note to self. Uh, rather than just the adjustment to the memory cell, or like signal 0, signal 1, whatever, we're going to receive S, and we're going to receive planet destination. Uh, planet orbit, moon orbit, whatever it is, just like this. So we're going to need this as well, up here. Um... So if... It's going gonna, it's gonna to look like this, which I think is the exact same thing we did at the other location. Or locations. We can just centralize this. Uh, if moon orbit equals... Um, 686, output S, input count, and then turn S into signal 0. S times 1 output as signal 0, because moon orbit 685 is outpost. Outpost 0. Uh, this will be signal 1, and so on. And Exorion is going to be uh, signal 2, which I think I already put in somewhere. Or maybe not. No, here it is. Signal 2. Okay. So we're still just going to send... We're still just going to send a negative from the outpost when the ship leaves to go back with the core fragments. And I don't think we need to send the uh, address or anything. We know where it is. So, I guess if we're receiving a negative, I was going to say if anything is less than zero, but I don't know, is it possible to receive a negative signal by some fluke with the other way that we send signals on that channel? I don't think so. This has a each greater than zero output each. And then that gets passed through to central dispatch. And then what comes through central dispatch gets put through here and passed through to the memory cell if necessary. So none of that should ever be negative. So if we are receiving a negative, um, if anything is less than zero, I'll put it input count. Well, I guess we should do each because there's a, there's a minuscule chance that we'd receive two of these at the same time. So if we receive anything negative, we pass it straight through to the memory cell, right? We don't need to decode what signal type it's supposed to be. So that's going to go here. And if it's positive... Implicitly, it's not going to go through here. Um, all of these checks are implicitly looking for something positive, so we don't need another combinator up this way. What was the address for Exorion Orbit? Uh, moon Orbit 1001. 1001. 
Moon Orbit. One double O one. And these are just going to be connected like this. And that'll go through there. It's actually looking pretty simple. Viking Gamer, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Back to central control. Yes, indeed. Um, I'm centralizing something that I would other otherwise have to copy at uh, every launch area. And it would add up to a lot of combinators. And we kind of run out of space down here. Eventually. With this one, we're going to have both of our n number of combinators that we might need. Stretching out to the left here. Uh, we need one pair of combinators, or three combinators, down here, for each outpost. Uh, and that's not going to be so bad, and it's going to be pretty easy to follow. Alright, so if we receive something on the green wire... Oh. Hmm. I... Uh... I guess technically it's possible, even though they only output for one tick, there is a minuscule chance, and it would happen eventually, we should assume, that two outposts are going to report like this on the same tick. Um, but if they do, we're going to receive signal 0, and we're going to receive signal 1, right, for example. So, what if that happens? Um, well, the S signals are going to add up. Oh, no, no, no. The negatives go through here, through here. So, that's fine. Uh, what about down this way? It'd, it'd actually be when the sh when two ships launch from these two at exactly the same time. Would that actually happen? I don't think it can. Because... Because it's when we're about to launch the ship that we send this through. And that's when we reset... The memory cell that's saying send a ship to this location next. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure the launching system back at home base, even when we have 16 of these, uh, we're never going to be launching two ships at the same time. They're going to be launched in serial. So we shouldn't have to worry about it. Which means we're never going to get, like, a pair of S signals adding up and causing things to be thrown off. Fantastic. Alright. So is that actually it? I know I have to make changes in a couple of little places. Um, let's see, down here. What, didn't I already change this one? Yeah, I need to make this look the same. And that goes straight to there. And that's it. That's the whole patch. Uh, let's go pick up... Apparently I don't have construction bots at that other location. Down we go. What? Oh, I ran into... I flew through the wall. <laughs> ran into the ship. So, are we actually that saturated with the core fragments downstairs? Yeah. W wow. Our raw emicide is saturated. 
That is a beautiful sight. Oh, wow, that did not take long compared to what I might have expected. All right, we can take Immersite for granted for a while. Um, and as for core fragment processing, uh, Iridite is absolutely saturated. We need to increase the rate that we can process this stuff. Because we need a lot more uh, Iridium ingots. Why is this blocked? Iridium powder? Okay, yeah, that does make sense. Cool, cool, cool. So Blast Cake... Uh, Blast Cake is just Iridium as far as we're concerned. Alright, cool. I can't pick up this spot. There we go. And let's just go make sure that combinator's removed. Lua Entity belongs to Surface AAI Signals. Oh, was it because I used Picket Dollies on the... Uh, on the signal transmitter just now? Probably. Um, missing a few solar panels here. It's fine. Okay. I'm surprised... I mean, maybe there's a little mistake I've made or something, but I'm surprised how simple that was. That's basically the gist of it. I mean, thinking of it wasn't as simple as it looks. It's like, uh, it's like any elegant code. It takes a lot more thought to design it than it takes time to read it. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so next is... Well, theoretically... Oh, have I not set up Exorion Orbit yet? I don't think I have. I can do it all remotely. So I don't have to change this at all. I already set this up. Um, did I actually... I think I did set up Exorion Orbit properly, actually. So now we're just... The only reason we haven't already sent a ship out there... ...is because the drop-offs for these two types of core fragments are saturated. Shouldn't that mean there's a ship here? Oh, or the ones that are waiting in orbit are all... ...full of purple stuff, I think. This is all of one, all of two, and all of four, and all of three is also coming back with purple stuff. This is why we need to keep track of how many ships we've sent to which locations. Um. Well, is there a short-term solution to this? Make a bunch of storage for the, for the purples? I'm going to need a lot, is the thing. Let's just double check it out, outposts. Um, I'm pretty sure because drop-off is saturated, we're currently not going to send a spaceship to pick up Iridite or to pick up, uh, Immersite Cave. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, so the moment we get a ship empty, the only place it should be able to go is Exorion. Let's get that sweet, sweet barrel. Alright, in that case, let's do a little temporary um, storage. Should I put a filter on it? Probably. And we're going to need, like, a few spaceships. 
with storage, preferably. Why aren't the bots moving? Logistic bot, 50 out of 50. No set requests. Oh, it has to be a requester. Right, otherwise I would have used this before. Um, although, now that I look at it, uh, we just had a bot that was presumably hovering here indefinitely. Drop core fragments in here. Uh, maybe we should incorporate a little bit of that into the design anyway. Did you add Barrel Planet to Central Dispatch? I did. I'm just trying to figure out how to get the ships that we've already got in motion. Uh, I'm looking for a temporary... Um temporary solution to the fact that they're all full. Um... Why don't I just cram in some... The thing is, I'm gonna need like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight requested chests worth of storage. Just, can, can I stop bouncing? There we go. Um, just to get something moving here. I guess that's fine. Alright, so once this ship launches, which it should do... Or oh, rather, once this ship is ready, um, we should be receiving a signal to say, please send ship to pick up barrel core fragments. It's rather difficult to see with how quickly that flickers by, but I think that is the correct set of signals. Um, so once this empties and a few seconds go by, the ship should get sent to go pick up barrel. Should do. It's signaling that it's ready. Uh, where's our launch timer? It's nothing on the memory cell yet. Why is that? Why is that? It's coming through. Well, what are the signals? Let's see. 80,000 barrel core fragments. And our address. 1001 moon orbit. And presumably some positive signals saying we need more cables and stuff. Uh... We're already down to only 2.2 cable, thousand cables. Um, yeah, that is getting sent through. Oh, did I not set up? I probably didn't set it up properly yet over here. Yeah, we don't have it yet. Okay, that's fine. Um, so it's going to be like this. Did you add barrel to central? Yeah, that's the part that I forgot. This thing here. I did add it over here. Alright, so this is going to be barrel or fragments. If they are greater than signal 2. Which... I've currently reset all of the counters. I think all of our ships are on their way back now anyway, so that should actually be set to zero, so that's perfect. Uh, moon orbit, 1001. Uh, if anything's greater than 9000, if moon orbit is equal to 1001, um, and if barrel core fragment is greater than signal 2, which represents how much spaceship storage worth of 
Spore Fragments is on its way to that outpost. Already. Uh, then pass everything through to the memory cell, and it's going to get our ship launched. You did not add barrel to central. Yes, indeed. Uh, which... Oh, did we launch it? I believe we did. No? Yes? Iron Hall of Four is headed for Exorion Orbit with some space train power packs. And apparently no uh, elevator cable. How much did I ask for? We've got 2.7k. Oh no, 2.2k. I didn't misread that earlier. We're only looking for 1.5k by default. That's fine. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. I believe it's working. Uh, now, it would probably help if we had a drop-off for Beryl. What do you guys think? Um, and I don't have an updated blueprint for this... This template. So I think I'd better steal it from here. Um... I'm just going to remove the spaceship clamp because I don't want a ship hastily parking itself here while we're still setting things up. Alright, let's get our scaffolding crane. Which may or may not have enough uh, of this floor. That is going to bother me till the end of time. Even if we never see it. I mean, there's probably going to be, yeah, like little crappy looking bits of scaffolding sitting out, sticking out. Uh, where did I just put that blueprint? It's in, it's around here somewhere. Oh boy. That's the one, isn't it? I, I must have just made that. It's got no clamp. Yes. Wait, we have to place the floor first. Absolute dab. Tile Ghosts. We need 2,000. Uh, so that's... Make it just a little bit more. Since Factorio likes to give us imprecise numbers. Um... Let's move the copious amounts of scaffolding we've got here for now. And as soon as we get the drop-off of barrel working, uh, I'm absolutely going to redesign and increase the throughput for Iridium Core Fragment Processing, because we need a lot more girders, that's for sure. Maybe it can catch up with how slow it is uh, with our needs eventually, but there's a lot of catching up to do. Alright, so we've got quite a lot of space platform plating here now. And we can probably turn those back into buffer chests. Fantastic. Oh, that should be signal 2, not signal 1 value 2. I hope passing that through didn't cause any problems. No, it should be fine. We're in the habit of passing those signals through to that memory cell. Fantastic.
Alright. Grab the blueprint again. And we need to go and change uh signal transmitter and receiver settings. Whoops. Again I fly through the wall. Get stuck in the ship. Uranium fuel cells have arrived. Right, what's this supposed to be again? Central clock. And this is for barrel core fragments, right? So if we're full on barrel in this request a chest. Then please stop sending ships to pick up barrel core fragments. And that's that gets snuck in on the central clock channel. Um what else? That doesn't change. None of this needs to change. This needs to be barrel. Um, and... Is that really it? No, this needs to be barrel as well. And not barrel core fragment. This is a... Has to be a separate arbitrary signal from barrel core fragment. So we're just using barrel to represent that there's a ship ready for launch here. And I think that's it. These ones are actually pretty easy to configure. Except... I haven't done these yet. And then station name up here. which doesn't really matter. And then last but definitely not least, whitelist barrel core fragments in this robot network, not erudite core fragments, for example. And then we need to seed it with at least one Logibot. Although, to be honest, it might take a little bit longer than we'd like um, for it to get around to picking up Logibots to speed this up. Let's just grab 50 from here. And away we go. Um, Alright, so then this is set to... Uh, I'm going to need a station to make this name. Barrel Core Fragment Dispatch. Copy paste. Or we could just... Wait, no. Yeah, there we go. Danger. That could have been bad. And then up here... Need to set this one to barrel core fragment dispatch. Pretty sure that's barrel core fragments. Uh, these two are set to ready ships and central dispatch. And I think that's all the channel setting. So that should be it. This should be ready. Now we can make a new spaceship here. Do I have enough uh, spaceship floor? Not quite. What are we missing? Aeroframe bulkhead, of course. And for that, we're missing barrel. Aeroframe scaffold. We've got a decent amount in this train, so once again, 
will just, as a one-off, have it drop off straight over here. And then we should have, in a few minutes, more than enough to finish another spaceship. Need to wait so I can get rid of this. There we go. Alright, let's see. How much have you got? Zero? Literally zero. Okay, then. How much did I drop off here? About a thousand? No, there was more. Um, I think it was, like, most of a train load. It's only two to one for this, but then we need four for each set of floor. So it's, like, eight aeroframe scaffolds for one spaceship floor. But then productivity bonuses. We're probably getting, like, four... Between four and five hundred spaceship floor out of that delivery. Do we have some aeroframe bulkhead up here? We have zero. Unfortunate. Uh, where's our spaceship? Is it already... I wouldn't be surprised if it's already back. Oh, I haven't set the... I haven't put down the clamps. I thought I was carrying clamps. In before I am carrying clamp? I am not. Why does searching for clamp find space platform plating? We may never know. I don't suppose the construction ship has a clamp handy? It does not. I thought I was carrying half a stack of clamps. Don't tell me I left them on Exorion. No? Or maybe they got sent back to the mall if I did. Well, whatever the case. Um... Oh! Wow. That wasn't exactly an accident. I did mean to, like, move off of this platform going north. And I immediately hit enter, but apparently not fast enough. I touched the space locomotive for one millisecond and I'm dead. That's cool. Luckily, we've got our train here ready to go all the time now. Um, what was I looking for? I could pick it up from here. Oh, spaceship clamps. Are they in here? They are. I should grab some before I go, even though I'm suffocating. Okay. Let's go grab our corpse. At the barrel. Core fragment drop off. Park here until passenger not present. And then go back home. Actually, stay there and wait for me. You're you're a nice fast taxi. Wait. Okay. In we go. Did you try if the bunker changed home world? I did not actually. Oops, kind of expected that. Wait, why am I still dying? Put, put on the thruster suit, you absolute muppet. Okay, did I add this? No, I didn't. Uh, this little decider combinator to our robo ports up here. Not that I expect it to still be relevant, but I really don't want extra stuff being sent just because the robot the robots report negative numbers, which don't make sense in this context. 
Um, I think I'll get rid of the requests on these temporary things. And then... And then, and then, and then... We're missing a whole bunch of fancy inserters. Uh, but more importantly, for the very brief moment, I want to set this... Wait, is this a barrel? Huh. Oh! I think the spaceship wire clamp pass-through entity... Uh, was still included in the blueprint. Even though I removed the spaceship clamp. It's either going to do really weird stuff, or just not work, or this is in fact going to pass through the spaceship clamp that I placed down here. Alright, so for Beryl, the spaceship clamp ID needs to be... Uh, 14. And if this is going to do what I think it is, yes indeed. Our first fully automated luxury barrel drop-off. Alright, I need to go get some more fancy inserters. I also need to make a barrel train. Um, let's grab the inserters first. And we'll get started on the barrel or fragment train over here. And I'll have to go back and manually... What? Where are you going? No, wait, wait, come back, come back, come back. Come back. Oh no, you can just wait there actually. Alright, what else are I coming for? Fancy inserters. Gimme, gimme. Should probably start making those in the mall upstairs. Alright, up the elevator we go. And once we go through, I need to get rid of that stop. Back to the mall. We should already have a ship on its way back to Exorion. Or not? What happened to ship number four? Iron Hauler 4 is... Hasn't launched again yet. Uh, because it's not ready to launch yet. Because... Bots have not stopped moving. Because... The ammo thing again. Uh, um, let's put another one of these down. I already stole all the construction, or all of the storage chests from that construction train. Oh, and in that time we went and made a whole other trip by accident. Wait, how many core fragments is this? Why do we have so many? Where did we just pick those up from? I... I don't know how that happened, but okay. Um, before I forget... We need some advanced additional electric engines in this train. And it needs a vanilla schedule to pick up... Several core fragments. Uh, here it is. Wait. Didn't I do a naming convention with these that included Vanilla Stop? I did. So what's going on up here? Oh, I, did I not update this? Maybe not. 
Hopefully we didn't have any trains. Oh. It's entirely possible we dropped off barrel core fragments already in the wrong place. Because the station is physically closer to the space elevator, it would have got priority. But do we have barrel core fragments here? We do not. Fantastic. All right. And I think we're almost ready to go. This is backward. Alright, so pick up barrel core fragments, go downstairs, wait at depot, go to drop off, go upstairs, wait at depot. Seems good. Um, and the requester. This will be fine. I'll need to go ahead and update the drop off as well so that it uses train limits. Alright, let's just check this is working. Oh, that's... What, what, what the... What? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Stop, 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 stop. Wait until full cargo. That's kind of important. Good thing I double-checked, even though I was sure that it was already set to work. Down the elevator we go. And barrel core fragment drop-off is over here. We need some decider combinators. Unfortunately. I know. Oops, let me out. I guess I didn't need the construction train here after all. Um, so that's gonna go there. That's gonna go there. That goes there, that goes there, and we're just going to copy the logic and change the symbols. If there's less than 6k barrel core fragments at this drop-off, output core fragment barrel uh, in order to set train limit. And that way the vanilla schedule train won't drop them all off here until it's oversaturated and this one's empty. Alright, so we should now have a whole lot of core fragments coming our way. And Beryl can stop being slow. This one actually is set up to do nothing but process core fragments in this block, so we don't have to worry about ratios changing. Um, I'm not particularly worried about power, but in any case, oh, bring the construction train over, wait here until I steal all of your modules, I think it's, it's definitely three or four speed modules to get this down to negative 70% power while still gaining a bunch of speed. Negative 70%, perfect. Out with the old. And that's it. Oh, give me those... Give me those prod modules as well. What the 
butts back in. God damn it. When did I even mark this for deconstruction? 600 years ago? Oh, it's scrap. Because cargo rockets. I see how it is. Alright, let's head back. Alright, so barrel core fragments are going to be quite a bit faster. 48 per second potentially to go through our backlog, although it, for the moment it'll only be half of that. Until the train catches up. Um, back on Exorion, we can expect... I believe it was 13 drills. Uh, a whopping 18 per second. But we do have a backlog to go through um, in the storage here and in the trains while this has been running while we were setting things up. Um, but yeah, I think that's actually functional now. Oh, I forgot. We need the super inserters up there. Alright, let's just fly over. I doubt we're going to need more than one train to take each type of core fragment uh, down the space elevator. At least, certainly no more than one train per outpost. Or significantly less than that, actually. Um, and we got our answer to whether the clamp wire pass-through would work. And it certainly did. Alright, so now the bots have stopped moving, we should be launching this ship soon, I think. What's our condition that's not being met? The launch. X is 46. Available logistic bots. Four of them are hovering. Oh, it's this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we got this double supplied. Again. It always happens on the first delivery. There we go. I think we just got the signal to load this thing. You know what? Just just send... Uh, never mind. That could be a problem. Just put down another couple of these for the moment. Alright. So, ship is launching. Go get some more barrel. Beautiful. Obviously, more ships will help, but once we go through some more... Oh, hey. Once we go through some more erudite core fragments, this one launches. Once we go through some more um, emersite cave core fragments, this one launches. We stop having one, two three of our four. Oh, okay, it's actually worse than expected. We stop having three of our four ships queuing up to drop off. And we can start moving more barrel. Uh, let me check the memory cell thing. Ion Hauler 4 is the only one that's outbound. So we should have 18KS, or 18K signal 2 on this memory cell. Perfect. Looks like that's working. And as soon as this one is on its way back, it should all be clear. Unless we've launched a ship in the meantime. Speaking of ships, let's make another one. And I think this will be the last one that I throw together manually before making a, a gantry to build them more easily. Because we'll actually have some proper throughput of barrel um, to keep making these aeroframe bulkheads. Did we really... Did we really only get like... 250 bulkheads? That's 62 spaceship floor. How much am I carrying? Only 10. 
Uh, we've got 319, let's call it 330. That's not going to be enough. Alright, I guess we're waiting on a bit more barrel. Which means, once again... I think I should make more temporary... Uh, temporary purple core fragment storage, just to get everything moving again. Fast inserters, though. Have we still not emptied this ship? We don't have room. I'm sure two ships ferrying barrel are going to be enough just to keep up with uh, one tiny moon that's like a hop, skip, and a jump away. There it goes. Should be on its way to Exorion. Iron Hauler 1. Fantastic. And Iron Hauler 4 is on its way back, which means... Oh. Well... It should be the same number, 18k. Yes, 18,000 plus change. Uh, storage worth of... Uh, core fragment storage worth of spaceship is on its way to outpost number two. And that's the only outpost that any ship is on its way to right now. Not counting uh, our old Grand Theft spaceship that is still faithfully slowly running copper core fragments this outpost that we haven't updated. Not too worried about copper for a while, but eventually I'll update this to be the same as the other outposts. So it's got higher throughput and it's all nice and pretty. How's the Iridium ingots going? Much improved. Boovin, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Iridium Ingot, very steady for the last five and a half hours. I was just com commenting that now that we've got the barrel flowing, uh, it's time to... Uh, it's time to update our design and increase our throughput for Iridium Core Fragments. And while we're at it, we should put core fragment processing... I was going to say we should put it closer to the space elevator. It's not actually that big of a deal. Because the overall rate of core fragments isn't going to be that high. Uh, much more important to save room for things like material testing packs and... Naquium processing uh, to be super close to the space elevator, I think. Also, we're back to being totally saturated with material testing packs, which doesn't take long. Um, it's always either empty or full, because 42.24 material testing packs per second with a stack size of 10. Yeah, not going to take long to saturate. In fact, as it stands, with only one train... Uh, scheduled to run material testing packs up the space elevator. Um, it can't keep up with this block. 
So I'll have to add a train or two once the demand actually gets that high. Guitars, Boovim, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Big trains, indeed. That We do have big trains at the outposts. All right, let's jump into editor and uh, do some core fragment processing. And I might just steal from Beryl, because it's already laid out nicely. We'll get rid of the old power poles, though. And just to make sure, big poles. All right, so this is, wait, did that say Iridium? Did I copy it from the wrong, I did, god damn it. Oh, that's already getting quicker. Since I uh, removed a bunch of rail that's no longer necessary on Exorion. Lots of signals. A lot less pathing. Well, a significant amount less pathing. Uh, okay, where was I going to copy this from? Barrel core fragments, which are all uniform. Alright. Jump into the editor. Get rid of the old power poles. Put in the new ones. Change this to Iridite. And I'm going to have to make one more block. Because we don't actually have a block specifically to process uh, Iridite itself. Because we were doing two steps in one block previously. Um, but yeah, that looks good. Wonder what kind of rate we're gonna get. 48 per second. Iridite is quite slow. Our outpost with radius uh, 4063 on the planet, with I think it was 18 drills, only gives us 27 per second. So this block is going to meet our needs for a while to come, which is fine. Probably by the time we need more, we could just change the modules. Erudite, or fragment drop-off. Um, sure. Set train limit to core fragment iridite. If this is less than 6k. And... Uh, it'll have to still be an LTN drop-off until we get rid of, uh, until we update our Gibbil outpost. But otherwise, this could be a vanilla drop-off. We're not going to use LTN for these once we update all our outposts. But an LTN drop-off can, an, an L LTN station can function as a vanilla station. Alright, these are not going to change, I'm pretty sure. And this is going to be Iridite. And what's our max rate for Iridite? Quite slow. Uh, it's actually over 50 per second. So I would have to update this belt. But we're not going to be meeting that kind of throughput for a little while. Iridite provider. 
Uh, if it's going to end up being that fast, with a stack size of only 20, what's it? Only 10. Okay, in that case, I want more than one train load of storage here, so we'll use a splitter. And we may as well just do it like this. Don't need more than blue belt, maybe ever. Alright, so long trains only, so that this stays balanced. Can you show where all the raw materials come from in K2SE? Uh, sure, I can make a start. W Wu Valley Wow. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Alright, let's test this real quick. Um, what is it going to need? Some fragments. And we shouldn't need to change any of these filters or anything to get rid of stone and vanilla core fragments. We do need to add a drop-off for sulfuric acid, however. I, I imagine even at max rate we're not going to go through that much sulfuric acid, though. 4.8 per second? That's not a whole lot. Um... I kind of want these to have the same station name, though. Just to deal with the vanilla trains dropping off here. Um, so I'm just not going to update the station name on the one on the left, even though I will add... Uh... Fragment here at night. 3200, is that? Yeah, that's more than one train load. It's fine. So we're going to add a request for sulfuric acid. Only on the one on the left. And we're going to leave the stations having the same name, even though this one also asks for sulfuric acid. That way the vanilla trains can drop off to both of them. Uh, and then we just need to sneak in fluids, which is going to be pretty easy, actually. Uh, Alright, pipe to ground. Something like this. And this, and this, and this, and this can go up here. And then like that. I love K2 pipes. And this goes over here. Except, don't forget the part where the train has to drop it off. We're only going to need to drop off one type of fluid, so we don't need anything fancy here. I could use a bit of space pipe just to reduce the pipe count, but that's really not necessary. And that's it. Alright, all of our outputs are going to the right place. Uh, is there a universe where we should have two train drop-offs? Maybe. This is the reason why I was doing erudite processing in the same block. 
because the stack size of erudite is so small. I could always just have an erudite processing block right here. Uh, and we could, like, skip the train part. But... No, it's fine. Our trains are so fast, I don't think this even matters. Let's see. For the entire block, it is... Five stacks per second. Uh, which would be one train every 20 seconds. Um, I could make it two drop-off stations, uh, pick-up stations, rather. I think I will do that. I could either... I think I'll do it this way. We're going to do stone and ore fragments, like so, and erudite, like so. That should be fine, actually. Oh, um, I could probably, how much is this? Like 4.5 per second for stone and ore fragments? We could just put them both on the one, on the one belt there. That's what I was thinking of originally and then I forgot. All right. So then the trains will have an easier time, I think. Plus, we can store up more iridite if we're saturated. For when we suddenly consume a bunch of it. Or if the, uh, something breaks and the iridite core fragments stop flowing for some reason. Nice suit. Let's blueprint. Iridite core fragments. And train stop names, yes. Snap to grid, remove the cheat items. 86.25.1. One. And I think that's our blueprint. Snap to grid looks good. Uh, is there a... There's roboports. No roboports. There we go. All right. I think that should replace this one. Don't want to see this again. Um, and now we need to do a block to just process regular iridite in before I need the sulfuric acid. Um, let's see. Nope, oh, it's just a coverex-ish process. With some recycling. Alright, so we're going to output crushed erudite and sand. Um, I think we'll just do the two outputs down here. You know what, just remove all these. Remove everything. Start again. Uh, 
Uh, there's a bit of rail there that wasn't part of the blueprint, but that's fine. Alright. So we're going to have a unloader. We're going to be dropping off erudite and nothing else. Long trains only. Um, 1,000 per train load, and we can do three train loads. I don't see why we shouldn't saturate this. New red diet requester. And it was mechanical facilities or pulverizers, right? To make crushed iridite. We can't put prod modules in mechanical facilities. They're probably more expensive anyway. Crushed iridite. Fantastic. Alright, let's put our beacon in the usual spot. And mostly efficiency. Negative 70% power consumption with as much speed and prod as we can get. Technically we could fit more around... Well, how slow is this? That only deals with... 14.4 erudite per second. But we have to do a recycly thing. So I don't really want to try and cram another one in here. We're going to do the old swap chest design. Um, come to think of it, couldn't I just... How fast are these individually? Really, really slow. Let's just use a fast inserter. So we're going to output everything into the chest. Um, but we're not going to bring iridite down this way. Let me just see where the output station is going to fit. So for the half block, we're looking at only 9.5 crushed per second, which stacks to 50, I think. Uh, it stacks to 40. I still think that's slow enough to just use the old delivery cannon chest. Um, can we move this in a bit? Like here. Alright, so what I have in mind is crushed iridite and sand. Is going to find its way down this way. Uh, I'm sure we don't need more than one belt, actually. No, we definitely won't need more than one belt. Um, and then we do the same thing over here. So the iridite stays in the chest. Um, we may want to put some automation to say don't pick iridite up from the input belt. Uh, unless... There's nothing in this chest. Come to think of it. I could maybe do the input belt down the middle. How fast is this? Net rate of 14.4 iridite per second consumed. That is really low. So... I could maybe do it like this. Uh, 
And this is 1.2 per second. All right, cool. So we're just going to say if erudite, if erudite is equal to zero, pick up erudite from belt. And that's all there is to it. This way we don't have to have wire crossing over to the side here. And we need far fewer belt to make this work. Um, this won't necessarily consume from these two halves equally. But we don't need it to. We can just only request, like, a train load or two in here at any one time. Therefore, even if it gets completely imbalanced, it won't cause a problem. Yeah, that should be fine. We're already only asking for 300 stacks. We can fit 320 here. Simple enough build. Could you fit two builds on each side of the pylons? Maybe. Um, yes, actually. Except that the beacons wouldn't fit very well. Hmm. This part's actually kind of slow, so I sort of do want to try and fit as much as I can here, because the build that we just designed for Iridite Core Fragments is going to be a lot faster per block. Fat boy not so slim. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh... No, actually. Wait, what? Am I misreading something? Oh, it's not powered. Okay, that's what I was expecting to see. Uh, call it 50 erudite per second. And this can consume... 14.4. So, if we want it... To be able to more than keep up... With one block of core fragment processing... Well, let's see. Maybe don't just multiply that by four. Uh, 42? Can we do that? What does 42 divide into? Seven and six? Seven is not an even number though, how dare you. What if we put these hmm. I say what if we had like three of them? We would be able to make it symmetrical, basically. Put that close enough to cover that side. What? Don't drop the blueprint. And furthermore, don't turn that into a blueprint. Okay, that might work.
might be pretty neat actually. So that will consume 43.2 iridite per second. Which is most of what this can provide. It's not too bad. Oh, we could probably put more of these on the side even. Okay, how many machines do we have here? 36. We want 42, right? Yeah. Uh, so we need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So like 3 more on the side. Fifty point point four versus fifty point six eight eight. That's actually really good. I like that indeed. Kandar Junior, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. I could just do the exact same input shenanigans over here. I don't see why not. Alright, let's make this uh, tessellate. That seems okay to me. It's not quite right. Uh, can we fit it around the beacon? That's the only problem. And I think the answer is probably yes. That shouldn't be a problem, really. Uh, I don't have room... Yes, I do. No, I don't. I don't quite have room to do a loader and then an underground there. We could, in theory, push all of this up one tile, push all of this down one tile. So the question now is not whether we can do... whether we can solve it, but whether we can get the... aesthetic solution that we crave. I think that'll be fine, actually. pick up from the underground. Yeah, I don't love to do that, just for the look of it. Uh, we can. Okay. Um, I might make an exception on the sides here. We'll go up this way instead. just bring it down here. Maybe I should swap the sides on those. Yeah, I think I should actually. What? Oh, I did it again. Why did, why did I think X was flip? Alright. So, this is gonna go here. And same filter on all of these outputs. We do not want to move the iridite. The iridite stays on the belt slash in the boxes. Input belt. Do you want those machines to have two sides of input? Uh, what do you mean by that? Not sure if I understand or not. Alright, 
So, erudite goes this way. And erudite. Uh, that's going to be messy no matter how I do it. I could just not bother with the delivery cannon chest this time. Seems good. And one over here, the train stop's going to be in the way. Also, these aren't going to be equal. Uh, maybe I will use the delivery cannon chest. Even though this part refuses to line up beautifully. Actually, that's not bad. That's surprisingly good. Okay. And what was our rate for this? Only 7.2 per second. We could do that on the opposite side as well. here actually. Second column has inserters on the left and the right sides. Oh that. Yeah I want it to be able to swap erudite between these two. But we could probably remove some of these. That should be fine. Okay. So... Is this our standard... Shape here? Except this goes here, and this goes here. And this goes here. Well, no, that's just going to be like that. Normally. It's not going to be a whole lot of normal in this build. Were those inserters looking for erudite or erudite core fragments? Erudite, I checked. Erudite equals zero. Alright, so here we should have room to do it like this. That should be no problem whatsoever. Um, where's our inputs? We'll have 
to look like that. That one will have to look like that. Alright. And then don't forget the insiders. It's not too complicated, but it's easy to lose track. We're definitely going to have to test this. Um, and then don't forget the middle. Um, but yeah, I think... I think we can put this here. I definitely made some kind of mistake up here. There we go. And that should just leave the middle, which should be pretty straightforward. I kind of want to swap that around, actually. No, it's fine. That's backward. Pretty sure that just repeats, except for the part where the Pylon substations in the way. Might make a little exception here. Easy enough. Where is it supposed to fit? That's the second one. Is that it? Possibly. Let's find out. So we are dropping off nothing but erudite. And we'll see if we didn't miss any filters or something. Make sure we're not getting... You know what? Let's put a splitter here. Set it to Iridite. Um, if we see anything on this belt, then we know that was busted. And we'll just... Delete all of that. Um, but otherwise, we can infer that... Come to think of it... Yeah, I don't think we actually need any circuit wiring for these, because... Then again, I've made that guess and it proved to eventually fall over. But the idea is... We're consuming iridite slowly. Direct insertion from a chest uh, picks up in one tick which is much, much faster than inserters taking from a belt. So it effectively has priority. And we've also got a stack size of three, so should be more than enough. But whatever, we'll just keep it working in a way that we know will actually work indefinitely. Uh, but yeah, it looks like we didn't miss any filters. Fantastic. Now we just need a high priority drop off for uh, pickup rather for sand. What? 
Oh, did I miss a signal here? No, I did not. Fantastic. Alright. And signals. All right, that should work just fine. Uh, so all we need to do now is send crushed erudite to one output and sand to the other. And we'll make the sand high priority so that we, oops, so that we make sure it doesn't block our actual product. Now we just need to bring... Hmm. How should I do this? What would be the neatest way to do it? Sure. Alright, so this one's going to be sand. And that can just go down here. And then we'll push to the front. Allow short trains to pick this up as well. Never know. Central 2x2 chest would be symmetrical. I guess we could. What's the overall throughput for the whole block? Um, less than one belt. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's probably going to be for the best. Just one more two by two. Or I could not quite put it here. That's going to be crushed, erudite, and this one's going to be sand. But I think I will fix this one up so that short trains can pick it up if we want. So we're just going to limit the front to one cargo wagon. And we're going to set the provide stack threshold a bit higher than two cargo wagons. And then we don't need anything fancy that's easy to mess up. Um, to control pushing stuff from here to here. So this is going to be high priority. Send... Pick up, and this is crushed iridite. Pick up, which is quite slow, so we'll just use the delivery cannon chest to balance it. On the other hand, um, I don't think I'm ever going to pick up. Crushed irid, crushed iridite with a short train. Am I?
There's no constant combinator for the regular pickup. Yeah, that's true. Should have noticed because there was no station name default. Remind me again, our max rate is uh, 33.264 per second. That's less than one stack. I think this is fine. We've actually got 40 extra stacks of storage there, so we've got like most of a minute for a train to come and pick this up before the machines stop. I think that's our build. Going into Pulverizer, and out comes Crushed, Erudite, and Sand. And this is all we need. Don't need any fluids. Nice. Alright, let's blueprint. That was neater than I thought it would be. Snap to grid, 86251. Already got rid of the cheat items. Seems good. Uh, where am I keeping this? Good question. I've forgotten what my own indexing system looks like. Uh, if this is here, then this could probably go here. Oh yeah, because we had... We had the crushed iridite within the old core fragment processing block, that's why. Alright, so now we just need to decide where to put these. There's really no reason they need to be up here. Um, I don't think I have a reason to update this block. But in any case, the crushed iridite is relatively slow, so relatively few trains moving stuff around here. Probably want to move this block anyway. We'll make another one. So I'm thinking... There's really nowhere in particular this needs to be. Let's put them right next to each other so the uh, trip is short. Or even we could use belts and skip the trip. Uh, for the crushed erudite. I still like how it's a modular design though. Where is it? Uh, erudite core fragment processing is going to go here. Get rid of the old power poles. And down here. We're going to have... Crushed Iridite. And yeah, I think we'll just, in this instance... You know what, I could just leave that there. And we'll just turn off the constant combinators down here this time. Mm. 
and I'll run belts directly. Or I could leave the constant combinators and run the belts. Do I not have one? I do not. Construction train. Pay us a visit, please. Wait for inactivity. We should be more careful crossing the tracks. Alright, so we're just going to go from here and here. Down straight to here. Very, very easy. And we'll do the same thing over this side. And just don't bother picking them up. We're going to need a lot more pulverizers. Yeah, normally we only carry like five. Okay, let's see. We require... Uh, 56 additional pulverizers. Wait, let me just leave the construction train parked there for a minute. Pulverizers. Pulverizers. I think I'm going to need to go to the mall. There should be more on the way already. Actually, I think I just saw 700 million short trains queued up. Uh, to try and drop off to the Constructo train. That needs fixing. What was I looking for? Pulverizers. One media destroyed. Fantastic. What do we have here? Quite a few. And what about over here for some reason? Wait, how far away is that? Oh, here it is. Random steel chest go. Fantastic. Alright, I've got 50... I think I've got enough. All the pulverizers. Probably didn't bring enough unloaders. Might need some more belt. That should be enough to get both of these builds finished. Four fragment. Iridite and crushed iridite. Beautiful. Now we just need to tell our core fragment vanilla train to drop off to a different station. If we can find it. Oh, what did that say? No path. Really? Missing some signals? Where, where... Where are we... Oh. Oh, well, there's your problem. 
There's like one signal missing over here. Um, but yeah, this is our erudite core fragments. That doesn't work. Erudite core fragment. Um, where is it? I think it's this one. That we want to change it to. Down we go. And we should have... A train heading up here. Fantastic. And it doesn't have to go as far. Alright, what are we missing? Ghosts. We are missing 31 underground belts. Surprisingly enough. One more trip, please. And we need some sulfuric acid. Why don't we have sulfuric acid? Because we don't have a request threshold. There we go. Oh. So these blocks could deal with 48 iridite core fragments per second. Uh, from our new outpost, we're looking at... I think it was 28 at the most? 27 core fragments per second. Which for iridite is actually pretty good. Uh, also, we're going to have a big burst of iridite as we catch up with our saturated outpost. Um, and then we'll probably need more blocks than one to make iridium ingots. Dare I say? How are our ships doing? Two of them are parked. This one is waiting to drop off purple, which means only one of them. Nope, none of them are in motion. But this one has barrel core fragments. Wait. Oh, this one's picking up barrel core fragments. It's not full. It's like 60% full. Okay. I didn't think we'd catch up that quickly, um, even though barrel core fragments are kind of slow. That's fine for now. So barrel core fragments, we've caught up with those, but our other two outposts, uh, this one's saturated and this one's saturated. We have, if our signal is correct, one ship on the way to outpost one, one ship on the way to outpost two. Sorry, a border save. Iron Hauler one is headed for Stromhurst. Fantastic. And what was the other one? Iron Hauler 4 must be. No? Well, something's not correct here. Because Central thinks there's already a ship on its way to Exorian. And that doesn't appear to be the case. Unless one of these ships is trying to take off for Exorian. And there's some problem. What?
Destination Stromhurst Orbit. Destination Hagen Orbit. Oh, this... Yeah, 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 it's this one. No, that's correct. This one is on its way uh, to pick up barrel core fragments, but... I don't know why we sent a ship if we didn't have enough barrel core fragments, but it's fine for now. Captain True, Morbid Dragon, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Looks like you're going to need a bigger mall. Uh, possibly. No constant combinator for regular pickup. Wait, what was that for? Oh, for these? I switched them off because... We're just pushing it straight through to here. And there is our crushed iridite. Which, uh, judging by the speed of it, this is probably the first train load that we've filled up. I'm, I'm, I'm dreading it a little bit, but should I redesign this block? Or did I build it for tier 3 modules with beacons? Let's see. Um, well, let's do rate calc first. Iridium blast gate is very slightly negative. That's fine. Um, iridium powder is slightly positive. Don't we get some back from here? No, that's... That is crushed iridite, which is net negative 12 per second. Uh, beads should be keeping up easily. Oh, that's nitric acid. Beads... Positive six, that should be fine, I guess. We could probably remove two of those machines, but that's no big deal. Um, water looks good. I think we could just stick with this until we have high tier modules. Do you need to fix your LTN train issue at any point? Uh, what LTN train issue? Hagen, no train to transport. Oh, 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 the short trains. I forgot about that. Which, apparently... We've got 2.2k express transport belt. What? Oh. Well, there's your problem. Oh, that's going to take forever. No! No, 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 where are you going with that? No, no, no. It'll fix itself. The uranium fuel cells will come back home. It's fine. Yeah, um... I don't understand why... What if I made this one slower? Yeah, 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 yeah. By making this inserter slower than this one, we can actually make that work. So this is set filters whitelist, this is set filters blacklist. So I think what happens here is this reaches its target. Oh, no, now it's just working. You're looking for a hundred underground belts? Okay. 
got it. Oh, what if? What if, what if, what if? I can't use set filters and enable disable. Ah, oh, god damn it. I wanted to say S has to be uh, greater than zero and set filters black, uh, whitelist as opposed to uh, blacklist as opposed to whitelist. So that if we're no longer trying to put whichever resource into the train. Let's see. Read from the train. Compare it to what we're supposed to have in the train, which is this. And remove the difference. Instead of trying to hijack these signals. We're already comparing the difference, though. Oh, because this isn't anything sick. Okay. Yeah, I do need to do a whole other path for this. Alright, so let's say... Contents of train times negative one. Plus what we're trying to put into the train. Um, minus all of these signals. So we can just take from this green wire. Is that all it takes? Set filters, blacklist... And there's probably no harm in setting the stack size high. So as long as... As long as we're not trying to put more than four types of thing into the train, that should work. Alright. Is there not a train coming to pick this up? Crushed Iridite. Is it because this is saturated? It actually is. Well, how much is it asking for? 8k? Stack size 40. That's 200 stacks. We should definitely be scheduling another train to deliver Crushed Iridite up here. So why don't we do that? Do we have a bunch of long trains that are stuck somewhere? All of these are fluid except for this one that has no path. Why do you have no path? Where are you trying to go? Uh-oh. They're all trying to pick up... Tiny amounts of uranium. Oh god, what's happened? Oh no. Oh no. What? How did this happen with chain signals? What? Why are you blocking... Train? Why are you like this? Also, why did they come for less than... Okay, this one's fine, I think. This one came for 5,000. This one came for very little. Oh, I think I know the answer. I didn't connect these wires properly. So this has been reporting... Uh, provide stack threshold of 1. Because it thinks it's empty. But I don't understand why... Why this guy isn't full? Because it's been trying to leave. Okay, but why did you... Oh, was there a non-chain signal down here? There was... Oh my goodness, one signal. One signal caused that much. That much trouble. 
Well, one signal and then one uh, missing piece of wire, actually. All right. First of all, that should be a chain signal. We don't want anyone stopping in this two-way single lane area. Uh, you can just go back to depot. And this guy should be full by now, I think. Yep. You can go back and drop off core fragments. But oh, core fragments? Uranium. You can drop off uranium. And so can you, as soon as that train gets out of the way. Fantastic. And these guys will all sort themselves out, although to be honest, we actually don't want them all coming and picking up one stack of uranium each. So just go back to the depot. That's a lot of trains. I should have put a train limit. You know what? Yeah, I think I should have had default train limit 1. In most places. And that also would have prevented this from happening. Or most of it anyway. We would have still had an LTN train network functioning properly. Even if we had a couple of trains stuck here. Alright. Good enough? Seems like it. And hopefully that means a pickup for... Yeah, it's already happened. Pick up for our crushed iridite. Cool, cool, cool. There's actually quite a lot of storage for crushed iridite here, which I wasn't even thinking about. I assume should be a train scheduled shortly. As all those trains get back to depot, fantastic. Um, and I think I should probably make at least one more block. I don't think uh, almost 0.44 iridite, iridium ingots per second is going to be enough. Probably. Should I break this up so we can make cleaner builds? No, it's fine. I really couldn't be bothered right now, to be perfectly honest. Alright, let's put another one of these probably right next door. Could I squeeze it in here? Not really. And put it up here for now. It'll be easy to dismantle it when we want to upgrade. Because the shape of this will change when we have better modules. It also makes it easy to build. We need this random straight rail, though. Oh, is that already all in range? Nice. Even better. Alright, so now we can almost get one iridium ingot per second. Uh, which is actually 20th of a stack.
Wait till higher tier modules? Yeah. It's just free content. Alright. That's a lot of trains trying to drop off at the new stations that have multiple resource drop-offs. There's some missing entities. Uh, can you be more specific? Oh, we need a steam engine. Uh, and a couple of beacons, which I'm already carrying. I've got steam engines in the mall, but I have to actually find them. Should have picked up literally one. Oh well. So this two will be... Iridium Ingot. Fantastic. Alright. Where do we get the... Oh, it's over here, isn't it? No path? That makes sense, actually. Beware the trains. Here comes our red stuff. Or our other red stuff. It actually does take a little while to unload 30,000 of these pieces of pipe here instead of a direct push. It's fine though. You know how quickly we go through uh, Pyroflux? 1.6 per second if we continuously make uh, ingots here. And that was uh, 60,000. Nice to... where's the powder? Where's the crushed erudite? Bruh. Shouldn't we have some crushed erudite? We're getting there, I guess. Alright, so we've probably doubled our iridium ingots. Oh no. I forgot that I had a block up here, actually. Ooh, we have more than I thought. Even better. So we're not going to see that num... Uh, we're not going to see that average increase for a little while. Actually, maybe we've already seen it increase. Cool, cool, cool. Spaceships. Waiting with purple to drop off. Uh, waiting to finish dropping off purple. Going to get Iridium. And going back with Iridium. And I think there's... Oh, I was going to say there's probably still one at Ixorion, but it's gone. Nice. And it should wait until this is actually full before it sends a ship here next time. Uh, so there's just one ship outbound, and it's heading for heading out for ir uh, Iridite. If this is all correct, which it looks like it is. Yeah, that's good. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, do we have what we need for... Nope. I do see more barrel getting made. Let's look at beryllium ingots. Nope. 
Uh, yeah, there was a big gap there while we were updating our outpost. So, let's see. 26.4 per minute over the last 10 hours. 43.4 per minute over the last one hour. That's looking pretty good. That's looking much better, actually. Here comes the blast cake. I want to see these light up. How much does it take? Ten. No wonder we've got several of them still warming up. There we go. Alright, can we scrounge up a spaceship? Not even close. Because there's no aeroframe poles, because there's no beryllium plate. Um, we did just kind of quadruple our barrel though. ETA, four and a half hours to Isabella. We don't care about Isabella. Sorry, anyone named Il uh, Isabella. Uh, we're not going to that planet. That's pretty far away. Kinda small. It's got Bita Medias. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. What should we do next? Uh, I want another spaceship. That's what we should do next. I might even hijack some... I was going to grab some barrel ingots, but it's probably easier if I just move some plate. Get some of those scaffolds. Unless it's already been delivered up here. 319 spaceship floor. I'm pretty sure that's what we had before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we can at least get a few more um, spaceship pods. Anyway, let me steal some beryllium plate. And drop it in to make scaffolding. Or... Not scaffolding, actually, but aeroframe poles. Those are quite fast. And we should see a bunch of aeroframe scaffolding pretty soon. Let's turn off this train for now. And start thinking about the next outpost that we should take. Oh, I think I know the answer already. Well, I was going to say uranium, but I think we're actually good on uranium for a while. Um, since I added a couple more mines. I've seen this running continuously. Uranium ore consumption. I wonder what caused that dip. Um, but yeah, it hasn't been a problem for a little while. Oh, that's a lot of fuel cells. Yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about that. But when we do want to secure uranium indefinitely, uh, we've got Hermes here. 5k radius, 17% biter threat. That's going to take some effort. I think I'll go after... 
Oh yeah, wasn't this the one with the... Obulator? Where's the middle? Yeah, here it is. Bronton Burbulator. Brontion. Oil core fragments may... Oh no. I just realized... I wanted to do energy beaming to clear the biters from this planet, but a beam could cut across this thing. And we really don't want that. Oh no. It would take an awful lot of weapon delivery cannon. I could do artillery, but that would require a lot of hops. Hmm. Spidertrons? It would take a lot of attention micromanaging the spidertrons. I could do an extinction bomb. I've never used them before. I, I, I don't love the idea of, you know, making a planet inhospitable and stuff. But, um... Considering all of our other options, the only other way I've got to fully automate removing biters from this planet without spending vast resources is energy beaming. And energy beaming is probably going to fry uh, this thing. Oil core fragments? Uh, we can put that off for quite a while, because... Because, because, because... Entity, crude oil... This is how much uh, crude oil we've got on our home planet before we run out. It's not an insignificant amount. Um, I could go ahead and update Gibil and VerbT and Grinus um, to also use spaceships and get rid of all the old stuff. But I've done that once on stream and it's pretty time consuming. Um, I'm thinking maybe that'll be an off stream task. A few buckets give or take a teaspoon, indeed. Or bite the bullet and start on Vita. Uh, the thing about Vita is we have to clear a planet. 2.5k radius, 17% biter threat isn't too bad. Moss Garden. We could definitely do that. I think that's the only Vita planet in system anyway. We've got a couple of iron ones over here. They're very, very small. Um, we could update our copper one. Again, I think I'll do that side of things off screen. Uh, we've already got a decent rail network on planet. I'd just like to update this part to be the same as the other outposts. Um... We're eventually going to get our barrel from Achilles, but first we have to remove infinite biters. And... I haven't actually got... I mean, I've got rare metals coming from regular core fragments, of course. I could get core fragments from Nalvis as well. Um, that's going to... That's going to really shore up the basic resources. Except we need to remove six bajillion biters from Nalvis too. I think I will use energy beaming for that one. I honestly don't really care if some of our old stuff gets messed up by the beam on Nalvis. I want to remove it all eventually anyway. Make it, a, make it just another outpost. 
Um, there's only one place to get crude oil, but that's probably fine. Well, in system anyway. There's a few options for rare metals and mineral water, but I've never had a problem with those. Oh, there's also copper here. So I guess it really is just a bit of melange. Um, like, obviously we can keep pushing our bottlenecks, but we've got every other exotic resource short of Naquium. Oh my god, that's a rough oil world? Uh... This one? Vita Media's 1.1... 1.2k radius? I wonder how fast we get oil core fragments. But yeah, that's the only oil core fragment uh, source that we've got in the system. I think I'll go do... Ooh. Alright, I definitely want to get one more spaceship going before... Uh, before I shift focus. But it seems like our resources are flowing pretty well now. Fantastic. And our dispatch system seems to be working. So we'll get one more spaceship and then I think we'll work on energy three. Speaking of research, it's probably a good time to start doing some more. Uh, now that we can get barrel a lot faster, Beryllium LDS sounds like a good idea. Um, and then spam some more zone discovery. Sure, why not? Until I think of something else. Alright. Let's bring, once again... Our scaffolding over here. Maholic, welcome, welcome. How good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. How's the Bider boys? Too many. Too many. I think we need material three as well uh, to get energy beaming. Yeah. I think it's worth though. Oh, there's no beryllium plate here. Well, that's not great. Um, do we have some... Here somewhere, maybe? That's a decent amount. I'm just gonna trigger a delivery. And then hijack the train. And that should be all it takes. Since once it goes back to the depot, it'll reset its schedule. Love your immaculate base layouts? Thank you. I try. doop a doop uh, what did I just research? Oh yeah, the new LDS um, that costs infinitely more beryllium. But we're actually starting to get some now. And we also got portable RTG Mark II. Uh, I think I went over this before. It's actually worse than just four big portable Imosite solar panels, which is kind of weird. What mod, what mod gives us those? K2, right? Yeah, K2. Alright. 
Anything else I want to research in the meantime? Oh, can we do artillery range? We actually can. It's pretty expensive. But it's only utility science packs. Hmm. But wouldn't it be better to just not even need artillery? RTG2 are great. I mean... 1.2 megawatts versus... 4 times 384. 1.536 megawatts. Because weirdly enough, these just output the maximum all the time. And they take up 4 times 2 by 2 instead of you know, one by four by four. So just strictly worse. No nighttime? Yeah, the uh, portable solar panels don't actually care if it's nighttime, weirdly enough. Also, I think the night cycle on this planet is... Well, let's have a look at our solar panels. Wait, we don't have any solar panels here. Uh, I'm sure there, there must be some solar panels. Here we go. Uh, so that's our day-night cycle. About 15 minutes, almost. And then... Oh, there's plenty of downtime for the solars on this planet. The sun always shines on T-Hex. I wish. Although, figuratively. Uh, I have to say, the sun is shining a bit too much lately. Alright. Um, is this actually gonna... It's not gonna fill a train, is it? Before we run out of something. Although I am looking forward to this actually being saturated without me going out of my way to do it. Exciting. Our three worst resources we just got a good throughput, a good infinite throughput of. I'd happily swap some of my rain for your sun. Done deal. Let's go. Uh, what did we find? Sh... Stijo? Wait, did I misread that? S-T-I-J-I-O? It is really far away. 100% bided threat. 7% solar means it's probably really close to the... Interstellar map. Which means we might go for it long term. But since it's barrel, uh, maybe not. It's in the Nostos. No, the parent is Nostos. Which is in the Arione system. Oh, here it is. Uh, yes, it is extremely close to the interstellar map. Which might make it worth heading to. But we do have a 9k radius uh, barrel planet right next to us for the late game. Once we can clear the biters. So I don't know how many outposts we're going to need for barrel. In the end. Um, Bisha Monten. Bisha Monten. It is erudite, smallish, hardly any biters, 47% solar, kind of pretty damn far away. It's in... It is in the Sargus system, which is probably... That's Argus, not Sargus. Um, there it is, really far away. What was the name of it? Bish. It's not that close to the interstellar map, it's not too bad either. 
but no, I don't think I'd bother with this one. Then we've got Adelind. Uh, Vulcanite. I probably will need more Vulcanite at some point. Pretty small. A little bit far away. Not too excited about that one. Let's have a look at my options for Vulcanite at the moment. So we've got one planet in our system, of course. I think that one's a given. That's Granis. Uh, we've then got... That's actually the closest one we've found so far. Do any of them have terrible solar? Yes. Uh, Emma, Emma, I think we've looked at this. It's got priority five. Planet is Timagus. In the... Wait, what? Oh, parent was Timagus. Where was Timagus again? Yeah, here it is. Uh... Yeah, that's probably going to be one of our late game... What Once we have the anomaly, that's going to be one of our late game outposts. Really good place to get Vulcanite. Unless we find, like, that, but with 9k radius. Alright, let's take this to space. And we also found... I think we looked at Adeline, whatever it was. Yeah, we did. Uh, Xavier is also Vulcanite. It's kind of far away. Sol is good enough that we know it's not that close to the interstellar map. Kind of small. That's not good for short term or long term. So you need to build a spaceship, but only harder? Wait, what? 500 hour campaign, so a bit hard to summarize beyond explore space. Yes. What's the goal in SE? Uh, yeah, there's a lot. Of, there's a lot to do. Sorry, I definitely got sidetracked from your request earlier. Is there a train coming for this? Not yet. I don't think. Um, how much have we got? Doop a doop. Not quite one train load. Alright. Let's lower the provide threshold. Oh, it's already st set to only 50. Does that mean we've already got airframe bulkheads in the mall? No? That's weird. Are we not requesting them? Oh, we haven't started requesting them yet. Well, there's your problem. Oh, I needed to switch that back on as well. Alright, bulkheads. Um, just a bit more than a train load. And there we go. Incoming train. A good dozen or more planets, depending on how you want to play. It's all random, though. It's not entirely random, but yes. Alright, this will give us some more spaceship floor. I want one more spaceship making the rounds before we focus on science for a bit. Oh. Doop -a -doop. 
Uh, I think we looked at Xavier... Ganymede? Stop with the flashing. Ganymede is an mineral water. I'm not very interested. A uh, very big radius, not very close to the interstellar map, pretty far away. Skip. Ziada. Ziada. Vitam lunch. Too far away for short term. Solar is low, that's kind of promising. Not very big a radius. We can probably do better than that. F for the bot, indeed. Do you need to have materials transported between planets? Yes. Very much so. Alright, how much spaceship floor do we have? Only 75, really. But there's like 400. We've almost got enough already. Where's the rest of it? It must be in buffer chests. Oh, here it is. Back in ye old spaceship. With a bunch of other crap that shouldn't be there. What? Oh. I... <laughs> okay. I get... I guess I'm getting owned by my past self here. Um, sure. Anyway, we've got plenty of spaceship floor. We can definitely make another ship here. So, we need... Other than what the construction train is going to carry... A couple of nuclear reactors, some walls... Some doors. A couple of iron engines. Four booster tanks. Uh, one of... Oh. Give me a storehouse. I think there's one in here. Yes. One storehouse. With some red circuits, please. I don't want to turn on my Lodgy requests. They're going to ask for too much stuff. And a couple of storage tanks. Where's iron? And that should be about it. Some flat solars and holmium accumulators. Some add-on power poles. Um, and I think that's it. Mr. JJ, Toby, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Not Steel Mage as well. For the space capsule, do you read the rocket fuel or question mark? Uh, do you mean to launch a cargo rocket? I'm not entirely clear on what the question is. Also, I need to do a bloat of shame. Because I dropped all of my solid rocket fuel for the jetpack. There we go. To get yourself the rocket fuel would be for the capsule. Oh yeah, 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 that's one of the reasons. It's not just that, it's uh, if we're flying around personally killing a lot of biters um, on an outpost or soon to be outpost planet, uh, it's easier to run out of fuel than you'd think. Alright, let's just find one of these drop-offs. That is empty. Hopefully, 
confirm that there's no ship heading back with barrel core fragments right now. Um, how do I sort by type? Or did I just turn off spaceships? Yeah, there we go. Okay. How many of you are headed for Hagen Orbit? That's with Iridite. Both of you are headed for Stromhurst. And you are dropping off purple. Cool, cool, cool. No one's coming to this little spot right now. Um, let's grab our Iron Hauler Blueprint. And until we get those lasers upgraded, I need to borrow this little patch. So that we drop our... Sp oh, I forgot the spaceship console as well. Okay. Let me put exactly one spaceship console in here just once. It's not being delivered. Probably because it's in a buffer chest. Oh no. Oh no, that's right. That's fine. I thought a ship had landed for a second there. And then turn that off for future reference. Alright. We also need a couple of heat exchangers. I don't think the construction train is bringing those either. Whoops. Indeed. Let's go... Is that connected properly? No. For some reason. That looks fine. Let's go back and get the heat exchangers. Do you think jetpack fuel consumption is also affected by radius? Like spaceship? Um, I don't know. I never even thought about it. I would guess no, just because I haven't noticed a difference. Um, but that's no guarantee. Alright, what was I looking for? Heat exchangers. That'll be our new spaceship operational. I love these trains. It's out of fuel? What the... Uh, what's going on in our mall with... What? There's plenty of fuel here. What? How? What? What the... No. Why did this not get refueled? Do you think... Je Oh, yes. Oh, Asandanima. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I need to put uranium fuel cells in here manually just once because the request for fuel cells here is set when the ship lands. Um, and then 
get this thing started. We've already got water and ion stream. And... I think we can just leave this thing sitting here, right? How do you, How did you do speed in the end? Uh, with one more combinator than I would have liked for this little patch to happen. So basically we're checking the output. We're just doing D times one output D, so we have like a one-way wire here. Or actually it's not so it's a one-way wire, it's so that we get D and we don't get the speed signal. We're sending that to this thing. If D is greater than 100, output speed signal input count. Uh, and that's going to output negative 130. So out of our 200 target speed, if the accumulator charge is full, we're going to subtract 130. So if we're, if we're in any kind of asteroid field, um, our target speed is going to be 70. That's all. Cool. There goes our ship. The shell duck. Um, let's update its name. Ion all uh, five. And apart from the fact that it needs to warm up the reactor, that should all be good. Speed accumulator change is cool. Yeah. The first time I did that, I actually used an arithmetic combinator. Um, and then I just realized, wait, you can just change... I forgot you could just change the signal type coming out of the accumulators. So per accumulator that you read, it is a target top speed of 100. And if we're going to be bottlenecked on electricity, then... Target speed unlimited. Well, that's going to change as soon as we get a report from the accumulators, actually. I used that signal change as a signal my ship had arrived via clamp. Uh, which one? Once we hit 415 degrees here, then things will actually start working. The accumulator charge. Yeah, there's any number of signals you can use to check if the ship has arrived, depending on your design. Alright, now our accumulators start charging. Target speed is 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and so on. Fantastic. Although I do prefer, and I thought I had, uh, I, th I do prefer to design a ship so that it doesn't need a speed control, uh, so the defenses can always keep up with whatever the engine speed, uh, whatever our top speed is. Um, however, it's still good to have the safety measure of, if we're, if we're dependent on electricity for defenses, um, if the accumulator charge drops, Please slow down. That's that seems wise. Spaceship ID is better. It, it depends if you're connecting this console output. Sometimes you might want, not want to do that. All right, so we now have five ion haulers going back and forth. Um, out of the outbound ones, there are two. Headed for our Iridium outpost. Cool, cool, cool. Alright, uh, time to focus on... Did I check out Zieta? I think so. Zieta... Oh, that was the Vitamelange, yeah. Uh, I think I'd like to do Material and Energy 3 now. Which is going to take a little while. Once again, we're teleporting through walls. 
You know what? I actually didn't even think of this, but one of the perks of having all of the spaceship drop-offs in a line like this is I'll know exactly where I need to be careful of if I'm flying through or if I'm walking Spidertron somewhere. Not that I think I'll bother with construction Spidertrons uh, in orbit since we've got the construction trains. All right. Oh, I've also started Bio 1, but we don't have any Vidom Lounge yet, so let's not worry about it yet. Um, time to... Time to start on Energy 3. Which card should we do first? Well, let's have a look at them. Um, for energy 3, we need superconductivity data, quark data, entanglement data, and lepton data, I think. Let's double check that. Yep. I've already done the... Uh, the research server build, since it's a pretty much just a copy-paste edit. So let's see, superconductivity data needs electromag, particle collider, particle collider, and particle collider. Electromag facility... Particle Collider. See if any of these are similar. So which was it? Quark Entanglement Lepton. Quark Entanglement and Lepton. Uh, none of them have the same inputs, although maybe they might have different rates, but the shape of them is exactly the same. And they're all quite slow. 0 0.1, 0 0.05, 0 0.08. Uh, are any of these prerequisites other than to make catalogs? Let's see. Matter analysis data, so that's a yes. That's for quark. Uh, entanglement data. Goes into singularity data and lepton data. goes into just the catalog. I think I'll just do a half block for each of these anyway, and we'll leave room to double it. All of these builds are dissimilar enough that I'm not going to put them side by side. Looks like you need to queue up research if you want more systems. Uh, what do you mean? More systems. Oh, as in zone discovery? I had been meaning to do more deep space, because we haven't found the anomaly yet. Alright. We'll consider this our queue. 
They're all the same shape. We're just going to do one build and then copy paste edit for these three. So, uh, superconductivity data is going to be the most interesting. No anomaly? How's that possible? Uh, because I'm only up to... What is it? Deep Space Zone Discovery 8? That's probably why. Um, Alright, we have three solids and one fluid coming in. Uh, what kind of rate are we looking at if we do a half block? Let's say we fit as many of these as we easily can. Actually, can we do that? One fluid in, one fluid out. We absolutely can. Speed modules. Efficient. Whoops. Efficiency. And. That's minus 80%. Okay. Wait, what? Something doesn't... Oh, I did that in the wrong direction. Minus 70. There we go. Uh, so what kind of rate are we looking at here? Pretty slow, actually. Less than 3 per second. Superconductivity data. Uh, four contaminated scrap out. 1.18 junk. Inputs are all very slow. So we can do whatever we, uh, whatever we like with the inputs. We could do a little sushi belt, just for fun. Um, and since it's so slow... Maybe something like this. Let's line these up properly first. How's our research doing? Oh, almost done. I want to do a save real quick. Because um, I want to test... I, I, I imagine we wouldn't miss out on a zone discovery because we didn't have our eye on it. But I want to make absolutely sure. So we're at 97% with Zone Discovery 8. Uh, we've found Ziada. Let's go into the editor. It was on 99%. Let's go back. And... Oh, that's... That's kind of nasty. But do we just miss out on... The notification? Or do we miss out on the actual zone? Since we've since we're doing deep space zone discovery nine, we should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Pretty sure we didn't have all those before. Let's let's load this to be absolutely sure. So I don't mind too much if we just miss the notification. I'll just have to bear in mind uh, to do a search whenever I'm looking up, looking for a new outpost. Assume that we missed all of the new zone notifications. All right, let's see. One. Oh, it's in a different place now. It found a different zone. Unless... It just didn't refresh it? Yeah, we did find a different zone that way. With saves coming. Whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. There was a... I believe there's a deep space zone right about here. 
Love the save file name, indeed. Petri Cottontail, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's a nice emote. Have we found a single good uh, Naquium source? Do you ever see one that has the primary resource as Naquitite? We do have one that's very close to Calidus. It's only 30k away. But we're going to be using the Anomaly anyway, so I'd rather just go for, for one with a large amount of Naquitite. I think six have Nac primary. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so my idea here is... Set filters blacklist. Just to simulate train bringing stuff in. Wait, that's not... That's not right. There we go. A little bit of everything. Um, Holmium cable can be on one side of the belt, and then we want... Rhinite rod blank data card. So... Our overall throughput is quite slow, right? Yeah. We could just request... Well, let's see. If it's three different resources... If we can do 320 stacks on one side... One oh six. We could request a hundred and six. Let's make it a hundred and five stacks. Because this is quite slow. If we request a hundred and five stacks of each resource with um LTN and re request threshold of a hundred. And then we just push everything into one container. Theoretically, that should never cause problems. Theoretically. Better not miss it as Foenestra is zone 10 each time. Oh, really? It's only 10. I thought it would be deeper. Uh, okay, so we're going to go with uh, one, two, three. Able. Uh, Rhinite rod and blank. And then... Let's do a quick cheat input. Oh, we need fluid as well. That has to go up here. What? How quickly do we go through the fluid? Really slow. 61. That's fine. It comes out as cool. Which would be a pain, except we've already dealt with that. Uh, let's do the huge, huge storage tank. Um, and I guess, I guess, I guess we'll put our best input here. Set filters blacklist. Alright, that should be fine. Uh, and then... We need a splitter. Wait, no, that's not right. That's not right at all. What if I swap these around? Because... What we actually want...
just thinking of some different ways I could do this. Does that work? Kind of does. It doesn't have to be perfect because it'll cycle. Yeah, that, that should be fine. Nice. Very cool. Alright, so now I just figure out where I want to put this. Sporikin, Glacier Wolf. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So, telescope analysis discovered a new asteroid field, Spectre. Hey, that did show up while we were in the editor. I think. Oh. Uh, Deep Space Zone Discovery 10 is at 99%. And that is not Foenestra. We found... Caltrops. Um, can we sort by... Yes, we can. Let's do asteroid fields only. And sort by primary resource. Cool, cool, cool. Bad memory then? It might have been random as well. Okay, um, let's figure out where the output's going to go. And what resource are we looking for? Superconductivity data. Um, I'll put the junk output on this side. Spectre was what popped when you loaded in, so you missed what 9 was? Oh, okay. Wait, this system lock up if you don't have an input delivered in time. Uh, it's going to go back to these containers. You can never count on, or rather, you can always count on inserters putting into assembly machines or something uh, to pick stuff up irregularly from the belt, no matter how hard you try. So you should always cycle it if you're doing sushi, or if you're doing something like this. I did many experiments building engines in vanilla um, to try and have something like this work in a way where you didn't need to have the belt come back and recycle. It'll just jam eventually. Just have to accept it pretty much. Sushi, yes indeed. Alright. This is going to be junk data and 10 degree thermo fluid. Or negative 10, rather. And this one is going to be superconduct. Oh, we also have contaminated scrap. I could do a smart loader for the two junks, or I could do another train stop. I wonder if I could fit three stations. A pickup. Not really. Actually, I think that works. It doesn't work for fluid wagons. It gets a bit weird sometimes. But this should be okay. Alternatively, I could put the main resource pickup in the middle here.
might be a little bit cramped. I could move these up a bit. Something like this. I want to leave room to double it just in case later on. I could do float input this way, but I don't think I will. And output can be done in the same way. Let's just check that I got all those right. How much SBM are you targeting? We'll see, TM. But maybe like three data cards per second. Around there. Until we get to the late game and then we'll reevaluate, maybe go fast at the end. Alright, so sushi belt. Where's the output gonna be? That shouldn't be a problem. They're all quite slow. Let's just say tentatively we do something like this. It can't reach. inside of us. Long arm inside us for output. Oh, I could do the output here, couldn't I? This doesn't have to go this way. What am I doing? My brain is melting. Probably take a little break and get a drink in a minute. Maybe like this. in the middle. It's not a problem. And output. Uh, output's going to go like this. Fantastic. Um, and then we just filter out outputs. Let's put junk here. That's unfortunate. How about like this? And then we don't have room for a loader. Uh, I could use a splitter maybe for the junk. 
Except then... That's actually really hard to squeeze in. Uh, maybe like this. Might not look too bad. Could maybe live with that. We'll do the old delivery cannon chest over here. Splitter again. Or maybe through this way. I can actually fit one here, can I? I guess we don't need to. If we're going to be consistent, we'll use a splitter on this side as well. The middle set needs inserters still, I think. Uh, like this one. Indeed. There's no trouble at all. Um, and we need thermo fluid to find its way down here. It's an even number, isn't it? Afraid it's six tiles. Okay, that should be a seven. And output fluid is output. That can go down here. Oh. That's a little trickier than expected. It's fine. We'll need this to come down here as well. And... And where do I want to connect it? Probably over this way, where we can fit an underground, might be a good idea. Oh, that's a good fit, especially the symmetry with that. That's good enough. I haven't really left it super easy to double this if I want to. But considering how slow the belts are, we could easily run the output belt into the same output. And we could loop the input belt around. I don't think we'd even need another drop off. Not even close. All right, in that case, let's add a splitter over here somewhere. Just copy paste that 
Both of these should be high priority. We're only going to get one output fluid though. Uh, so this one will... This one will be junk data cards and contaminated scrap. Uh, I meant to say cool thermo. This one can be contaminated scrap. Yeah, that works out well. Slowest solid resource is where the fluid pickup is. And I can actually fit signals here as well. Cool, cool, cool. Then again, if this train was here, it would be blocking this one from leaving. Let's just not. It's fine. We're only going to be getting... 4.2 superconductivity data per second, so I don't think we have to stress too much about the train throughput. Superconductivity data. It is Holmium cable. Yeah, it is. For the input. Alright, let's test this thing. Make sure it works. Beautiful. Uh, this would appear to be backward. And this would appear to be backward. Fantastic. Some inserters are in the wrong site. Top middle, indeed. Lancel, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Middle set... Yes. Oh, I forgot to put filters on that second splitter. Super... Where is it? Superconductivity data. Oh. I think what just happened there was I did a even distro for the data cards like this. And then, while that was about to happen, I picked up data cards from here, and then even distro took them. Which is fine, but I didn't know it worked that way. Alright, let me just get a drink real quick. Okay, that looks pretty neat. Let's check all our settings and stuff. I don't believe I've done the LTN requests yet. And what do we need? 100k super cool thermo. And 
105 stacks of each of these. So, Holmium Cable, Cronite Rod, Blank Data Card. Holmium Cable, Cronite Rod, Blank Data Card. 5,250. And times four. 21,000 for Cronite Rods. We could probably set it to like 20,250. Just a buffer of 250 before we summon the next train. So everything the trains drop off should end up in here and it shouldn't overflow. Break? The only thing that breaks around here is the train scheduling. How dare you. You set it too low for cryo rod? Um, 21,000. But I just need to set it to 100 stacks plus a little bit. 20,000 plus 250. It takes... Uh, it takes 40.85 seconds to run out of cryonite rods once we're down to 250. Add a zero? Oh. Three. Well, now it's too much. Um... Let's just say... Wait, how fast do we consume from all these? 0 0.68, 0 0.34, 0 0.34. So if anything, it's um, Holmium Cable that we should have extra of. So 250... Extra for those two, and 500 extra for Holmium Cable. That should be fine. And we are requesting those three things. Oh, you're kidding. Uh, I wish it wouldn't reset my progress when I do that. Cryonite Rod Blank Data Card. Requester goes into Electro... Oh, come on! <sighs> I'd already typed E to search Electro, I typed L and somehow it ditched all of that. Alright, Holmium Cable, Cryonite Rod, Blank Data Card, Request, and that goes into an electromagnetic facility, and out comes Superconductivity Data. And I'm not going to list the junk outputs. Okay, that should be fine. Don't forget to signal that, otherwise the train here would block the roundabout. And we don't need this. I've done that. If you defocus the input field by mistake, then your hotkeys take over and open windows. Ooh. all correct. All right. I believe that's finished. 
Let's blueprint. Super conductivity data. Snap to grid. 86. 25. 1. Uh, I forgot. I'm going to re remove the excess scaffolding. And we'll fill in a little bit more so that it doesn't look super tacky. That's fine. Also, to make sure that the scaffolding is filled in where we're trying to put the bulk rail loaders, because sometimes it puts gaps behind them. That looks kind of sketch. Nice and neat. Oh, there's a lizard. Alright, that should be our build. Did you put scaffolding down? I did. Or rather, I removed it now. Alright, once more with feeling. Snap to grid, 86.25.1, and that's superconductivity. Fantastic. Um, probably should have left room for the tier 3. Oh well, I'll rearrange it off stream maybe. Now, where do we want to actually put it? Uh, energy science is down here. We've done one and two. We could do energy three here. Don't think that's going to be a problem. All right, let's put superconductivity here. We'll put the second one here, third one, fourth one just to keep it kind of organized. And we're going to need our scaffolding train, which I left parked somewhere for some reason. Whoops. Kind of convenient right now, actually, unless it doesn't have enough scaffolding to get the job done, which it probably should. Wait, how slow is this train? Did I not give it the... the upgrades? <gasps> Scaffolding train! You don't have the speed upgrade, which doubles as a fuel efficiency upgrade. We're gonna have to fix that. Alright, so do we have Foenestra? We do. We got it. So we can now go anywhere we like with about 20,000 distance and change. Cool, cool, cool. So all of those uh, planets that I've looked at and said, well, that's good late game. Uh, unless they have zero biters, the only thing in our way from exploiting those is energy beaming to remove the biters or we could do uh, 
what is it called? Extinction bomb, but I don't really like using those. Alright, so let's grab our construction train. We're gonna need uh, a bunch of, I think it was 18 electromag facilities. Hopefully they're on their way. Uh, yes, yes they are. That was quick. Oh, but this again. I could have sworn... Uh, are we really not able to make signal transmitters? Where was the... Here it is. We've only got 17, we're trying to make 40, but I don't see any being scheduled to be built here. And that seems very strange to me. 40 signal transmitter minus 17 equals greater than zero. Why are we not trying to auto-craft a signal transmitter? The combinator is off? Well, there's your problem. Have you... Have you checked that it's plugged in? Uh... We should probably start using the higher tier solar panels. I mean, I haven't had trouble with power for a while, but if we were to upgrade all of these tier 1 flat solars to tier 2, um, it wouldn't be that big of a job. But yeah, it would be a little bit helpful. Have you tried turning it off and on again? Indeed. All right, is our construction train ready? I believe so, except this guy's hovering. I wish we could automate so that whenever the construction train is at home, uh, its logistic, uh, its construction bots are disabled. Because it's always for some reason, it's always top priority. If I go to build or deconstruct something here, uh, it's going to be a bot from the construction train that does it, if at all possible. 42 minutes in day 69 of my SE. <laughs> Indeed. Alright, once this is loaded... Once this is loaded, there we go, uh, we'll head down here, and wait for inactivity, and place our blueprint again. Easy peasy, except I don't want those scaffold there. We should already have everything we need for this to just start working immediately. The moment that we place these, LTN should be bringing stuff. Can you upgrade planner the solar panels? Yes. Yes, we can. Yep, there's our cables and finite rods incoming. And fluid, and where are our blank data cards? Do we have blanks? Oh no. Uh, it's actually contaminated cosmic water output that's the problem.
And why is that? Contaminated cosmic water is full. Um, because contaminated biosludge output is full. Have I actually not made a block to to deal with contaminated biosludge yet? This is a pickup. This is a pickup. This is the old spaghetti. Um. So that's a no then. All right. Should we maybe do that? Galactic gravel. That's a that's a nice name. I hope. I hope it's going to turn out to be awesome. Stone. Hardly any nacrotite. Come to think of it, that sounds like a de deliberate choice. Still not cleared up the old spaghetti. Indeed. Alright, uh, let's do a block for dealing with contaminated biosludge. Is that everything? Let's make sure. Alright, we're definitely doing input here. And... It's only going to be fluid, right? Or at least for the input. So we're not going to need this mess. Uh, and then, let's see. Contaminated bio sludge. Gives us bio sludge and a little bit of contaminated scrap. Unless we just want to avoid it, which we don't. Well, it is called gravel? Yeah. Why couldn't gravel be full of diamonds? Answer me that. Uh, what machine do we need? A uh, recycling facility. Or decontamination facility. That tracks. Bio sludge decontamination. Uh, I don't know that we're going to need that much throughput, but I'm going to want a ton of storage. And maybe I'll even vent it if it's, uh, if it gets completely full. Alright, how am I going to lay this out? Um, it would be really super obvious if not for the solid output. We just do it like that. I think we should more or less do it like that. Whether this will be input or output. But uh, we just need a little bit of room for output belt. I'm pretty sure there's no incentive to make it a squiggly belt. Not gonna fit. Well, we probably could fit one more. we beacon it all neatly, somewhat? Hmm. 
Let's just make it neat and not be too greedy. We could probably put... Um, let's see. Uh, 12, 24. Is that actually 48? Six, twelve, twenty-four, rather. Dirt. Whoops. Could do it that way, or I could use undergrounds so that the inserter has room. Yeah, I think we need to save a little bit of horizontal space. Maybe. And second thought. Let's see. If output belt... Who's here? Uh, we would have to put this here, actually. And then... That would cross over. I don't like that. And now that I th think of it, I kind of want input like that, and we'll put the two outputs together. Alright, let's figure out where this is going to fit. Good. That's gonna have to... Oh, why don't we do this? That's pretty neat. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty tidy. Our rate for contaminated scrap should be agonizingly slow, even if we did this. Uh, let's see... 24... Uh, that's still only... 1.2 contaminated scrap per second. Cool. Let's get some module 3s. Negative 70% speed. And output. That is going to need to have a solid. It's not going to need to be all that fast. Um, and I did say I wanted to have copious storage. about this? That's one off. Doesn't fit too badly though. That fits really nicely. Let's see how the other side does. Wow. 
one off. And not one off. It's fine. Uh, I just realized I'm not going to be able to... Oh, yes, I can. We'll just do our belt input like this. Since it's going to be so slow. Limit the front to one cargo wagon and set the provide stack threshold a bit higher. Beacon? Uh, yes. I think we need more tanks. Maybe. Can we fit more? Mostly. Oh, if I'm only measuring from here. Then I should probably have pumps pushing into it. Hmm. How about this? And anything in here is a bonus. I wish I had a mini pump just so I could have a one way that was one by one. Put it in here. This is probably pretty decent. I could always do a separate storage module for a fluid if I really want to. But yeah, if we're going to do it this way... Can I move that up a bit? Hurry up, auto save. Mach schnell bitte. The show. If we put this here and this goes here. Seems good. This is a little wonky, but I like how I like how much storage we've got. And we've got fast loading for the fluid as well. Uh okay, one problem. If I do a shared pickup. I can't have separate prior. Oh, I want this to be high priority bio sludge to pick up anyway, compared to if we go out of our way to make it. That should be totally fine. I could move the beacon up a bit so we have more storage. Um, I also want to have copious storage for the contaminated coming in. I guess I could do... Even faster... Even, even faster... Loading... Oh wait, you can only have two pumps connect to a fluid wagon anyway, right? 
even if there's three connection points. Okay. Remax per wagon? I think I tried it before and it didn't work that way. Uh, I guess I could do a little experiment. Well, let's put a locomotive here first. So we know it's snapped into place. Huh. Okay. Unless something changed, I've always built three stations. Fair enough. Okay. So we've got copious uh, storage for contaminated. How much can we fit here? 200k times 7. Uh, 1400 and 50k times 10 uh, 1900 times 1000 how many zeros is that 1.9 mil cool 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 we'll set it to like 1.8 mil Contaminated by a sludge. And don't forget to connect these. And then this goes here. And this doesn't line up. Horrendous. What's the max rate? Uh, per second. Okay. <laughs> Three. Three point. Three point two thousand per second. Uh. Do you think we have enough machines? I'm not sure. I don't know. So it's a little sketchy. Let's add even more storage here for the contaminated. It's going to take a lot. Um, let's see. 7 times 200,000 is another 1.4 mil. Uh, was that plus 1.9 mil? Uh, why don't I just make absolutely sure? Just wait for that to fill up. Um, and stop consuming it. Alright, I was thinking of doing a pipe connection down here. Something like this. And I'll probably just remove some of these machines. Because uh, we'll admit that we don't need this many. At least not yet. What about the solids output? Wait, this doesn't have input? 
Oh, because I cut it off. This one does. Okay, we can probably just do our belts like this, because they're so slow. Seems good. What else was I trying to do? Fill this up so that we can be absolutely sure of how much it actually is. Just read it off the green wire. That belt is blocking the bottom rail for signals as well. Bottom rail for signals. Oh no. Uh, well that's okay. I can go there. Well, pretty much anywhere we'd like. Or we could just move this. I think I like that better. Alternatively, we could not have the extra belts that we don't need. Matters, but then we would have the belt sides balanced. Cool, cool, cool. All right. How much contaminated bio sludge is this? Three point one mil. I think we'll just ask for three mil. Easy fix, indeed. Actually, it looks a lot neater. And why don't we extend this out here? Seems good. You could also put this here. That's probably enough. Okay. Bio sludge output is all done. So just again to double check. We're looking at 3.2k per second that we could go through bio sludge here. I might blueprint it this way, but I'll trim some of the buildings away when we actually build it. We're not going to need that much for a while. Or maybe ever. Let's get rid of the cheat types. Okay. 
Can I do a decom planner for those? Or are they special? Uh, wh which infinity pipe is... <laughs> okay, that works. Lucky? Question mark? Or would it have worked no matter which one I picked? Alright. That can go here. And that looks kind of weird. I like that better. about this. No, uh, that's actually fine, I think. The right output line is not connected. The right output line is not connected. Is it not? Why are we bunking? Input. Right input. Oh, because I disconnected it. There we go. Alright. This will be a high priority pickup. Um, short trains are permissible. Sorry? No, that's fine. Left side of build is broken. Is it? Same with mid belt. Mid belt is indeed broken. Um, but yeah, this pipe actually traces back here. It's fine. Okay, this is one situation where pipe visualizer isn't actually that helpful, I have to say. Um, but yeah, let's do contaminated by a sludge requester going into D on facility and out comes lovely clean bio sludge and I'm not even going to mention the very rare contaminated scrap this is contaminated scrap and bio sludge high priority pickup And that's all there is to it. Alright, let's blueprint. Uh, D. Bio. Bio sludge decontamination. Maybe a pump? What? Between... a pump. Need a pump between right and left input? Oh, because of the speed of the fluid that would be consumed. That's actually a good point. This is 1.6k per second, which, um... Keeps this keeps up better than I would have expected actually from here. But yeah, on this side we're gonna have problems. I wish this just happened to line up properly. That's one off. 
Actually, if I had moved all of these over one tile, then our train input wouldn't have lined up properly. Never mind. Left line is not working. Yeah. I seriously doubt putting a pump here is going to be enough. I stand corrected. Okay. That's, uh... Weirdly, these two machines are now struggling a bit. But yeah, that is um, not, not quite the way I thought that would go. Hmm, how could I... I wish this lined up. Give me a sec. to you for a little caffeine. There's no way I can move things down a couple of tiles, is there? Actually... Kinda, yeah. We literally could move it all down a couple of tiles. So not enough throughput in pies? Yes, indeed. To run those left machines... Yeah. Or I can put a pump here and it becomes the right side ones. Just a few of the right side ones. Uh, that don't quite get max throughput. Uh, it would be breaking the rule of the beacon being right in the middle, but I'm not that fussed about it, to be honest. If we move all of this down a couple of tiles... Then we can put pumps here. Oh, that's not quite where I thought it would be. It's probably fine. So then... I guess this could weave through here. And only look mostly sketchy. So, is this getting saturated? Yes, it is. We actually don't need this anymore. Whoops. Just for the look of it. That should be fine. So FYI, that Android Twitch client doesn't do good spell checking, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Hence I'm illiterate when on mobile. Oh no. 
Alright, are these all still connected right? Looks like it. And I guess I can live with this. I, I suppose. This is nice. And yeah. Alright, let's a blueprint. Contaminated Econ Bio Sludge Decontamination. I wish they add a custom texture when belts meet up like that at the bottom. Hmm, that'd be nice. Spell check suggests fixes but doesn't do them automatically like eight uh like on other apps. Hence lots of eights instead of yes. Not sure if my phone or some keyboard setting to fix. Uh, is this right? I think so. Yeah, I think we're good. Snap to grid looks fine. And... Don't know where I want to put this right now. Probably next to cosmic water and stuff. Yeah, here we go. You know what? I think I'll put a recycling symbol for this as well. Alright. Now it is high time we built this thing. Long overdue, actually. Oh. It's probably going to be fine, but I just realized something that I didn't check. That's the wrong build. Yeah, the insertals will be fine there. Alright. Oh, 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 before we do, let's give our scaffolding train its wings. Why are we bonking? Coffee first? I've poured myself some... some caffeine. It's been pretty rough the last couple of days with the heat. Uh, alright. Give me some... of these. And give me... uh-oh. Why don't we have more advanced additional engines? We do have 45 lying around. You know what? I want them here as a priority. I think they're coming from the spaceship. Yep. Alright, that's more than enough. We need seven and five of these to support it. And seven, and five of these to support. And now our precious scaffolding train is going to be significantly faster. Let's see just how much faster it is. Get a feel for it. Oh, I also wanted to know why the hell... Oh, that's the wrong station. Why the hell this train wasn't getting refueled. Because I was parking it here. What's its conditions? Empty cargo, return to mall one second of inactivity. Well, that should be enough. Can it get back to the mall right now? Nope. Uh, I can't make it go the other way. I'll have to take it some batteries. But first... Oh, that's better. Oh, wow. 
even a long train can go that fast. Beautiful. That's nice. Alright. Let's go deliver some batteries. And see if we can't figure out why our little train isn't getting refueled. Be careful of the spaceships. Let's just hop in and give it the minimum to get home. Sigma Bean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. The robots can work off the train. Uh, yes. Yes, indeed. Uh, it put in one. Do, do I just need to move it up here? No? What? What? Does anyone know why... Why we're not fueling this train automatically? If I put it on manual, it fuels. It's a mod though, vanilla trains can't do that. Uh, yeah, K2, and there's also a different mod if you're not using K2 called, um... Vehicle Equipment Grid lets you put robo ports and stuff in trains. Okay, why? It's only this train, by the way. Well, you know what we could do about it? Just give it stack inserters. So that whenever it comes back and it inserts just once, uh, we're going to get another 12. That's not actually going in. And there's room for it. Space train power pack charged. 4 plus 12 is 16. It could fit in that stack. Does anyone know why this one train is not getting refueled or repower packed just like all the others? It's not stopped, it's started leaving its journey. Hmm. Uh, so actually what I need is and inactivity here. That's probably it. Yeah, you're right. I kind of thought uh, that it would be that, except I was looking at the schedule wrong. Alright, just to test it, let's put this on stack size 1. Okay. That's more like it. That's what I want to see. Oh, we could make another spaceship. Which probably means our barrel has been doing much better. I don't suppose we've made any... Scaffold, um, airframe bulkhead, rather. I do have it set as a low priority. More important for our barrel to go into other places. Um, we made some a, almost a couple of hours ago. I feel like that was probably me manually putting stuff in here. Well, what about 
uh, every frame scaffold, which is kind of the main bottleneck for that. Every frame scaffold. That still doesn't look very promising. Didn't we massively increase our barrel throughput? Is this broken? Uh, yes, yes it is. Although this wouldn't have stopped any of this. Barrel... Yeah, I accidentally got rid of a power pole that was used to get that signal across. Let's turn this off for a sec. Um, that's a lot of pyroflux. Can I drop it off somewhere? Yes. Yes, I can. Oh, there's another train coming to drop it off. Figures. Uh, how about you go here? And empty. And then go back to depot and get your schedule reset. And... I was about to use this one as well. Oh, that's the same one. Uh, what about the pyroflux that makes volcanite blocks? Oh, rather... Damn, that's a lot. Vol volcanite blocks turn into pyroflux. I'm amazed how easy it's been to keep up with uh, volcanite for quite a long time now. That used to be our biggest problem. Alright, we've got quite a lot of pyroflux we could drop off here. Let's do that. Put the nearest copper. Fantastic. Aero frames were bo bottlenecked on poles. Why are they slow? Barrel. It's all barrel. Beryllium plate. Uh, I was going to look at ingots. Beryllium ingots. Beryllium ingots haven't really changed much. In fact, if anything... Oh, that was when I was messing with them. Uh, yeah, we're probably saturated on barrel itself. We probably need more processing, just like I... Just like I changed with... Uh, Iridium. No, this is not full. Did I make another block to process of Iridium core fragments? I don't think so, because it was all already like this. This one's empty. We're not saturated on beryllium core fragments. Huh. Okay. It is still a material bottleneck. I guess... Yeah, I, I guess our demands are ahead of what this little planet can supply. At least in with core fragments. And a ship just left with barrel core fragments. Fantastic. How fast, how long does it take to get back? Less than four minutes total, probably. Nice. Maybe I should research the extinction bomb just so we can get Achilles.
It's either that or a lot of solar energy um, to scorch the biters. It's going to take a long time. Alright, I think we got a little bit distracted here. We need bio sludge uh, recycling. Contaminated bio sludge recycle. Fantastic. Oh, uh, and what do we need? Way too many decontamination facilities. That's probably way more than enough for now. Uh, but let's see, we need 12 of those. Decontamination facility. Do we have 12? We do. Very much so. Cool, cool, cool. I noticed blank data cards. Oh yeah, this is how I figured out blank data cards weren't moving. Because we don't have an output for contaminated cosmic water. Last playthrough, uh, I had contaminated cosmic water decontamination on the same block as this. Because it wasn't hard to keep up with. But then we have to deal with the uh, contaminated scrap output as well. That's why I didn't do it that way. I've been avoiding uh, having to have smart loaders where possible. Because that circuit UPS eventually adds up. And the storages? Uh, what about the storages? What storages? Alright. Inactivity... That should be as good as built. Probably didn't take that many huge storage tanks, actually. No, we did, or are we one short? We're one short. It's one more than a stack. I could honestly ignore that one if it weren't for its position with the, uh, with the wires. How many storages are needed? Yes. One off. They stack to 20. Oh, there's something else missing. It's modules. And I don't have enough. Do we have them up here? Yeah, we do. But I should go get some more from downstairs, I think. Oh, and I'm not carrying the... Mm. Grumble, grumble. I don't happen to be carrying... You know what? We can probably do this. Uh, the huge storage tank. Why am I requesting Red Belt at the moment? Don't really need the old power poles either. Uh, we got any speed modules? And 
Fantastic. Down we go. How much power do these things consume with no beacon? 8.4 megawatt each. Okay, maybe it's actually better to have this when we've got so much power, but like consistency is important. Okay. So I just realized I did contaminated bio sludge. But what we really need is contaminated cosmic water. And I wanted to put contaminated cosmic water here. Whoops. Give him a round of applause. Could I fit it here? Contaminated cosmic water? Uh, it's pretty much the same. I could even swap it. Right? Let's see. Five seconds. 100 contaminated becomes 99 plus contaminated scrap plus one contaminated bio sludge. Huh. Okay, that's a little different. All the more reason to put them right next to each other if we can. LTN is complaining again. What broke? Uh, I don't really care right now. Hagen orbit. No train to transport fluids. We might just need more fluid trains. Probably. Alright. Uh, let's try... And I'll be a bit careful about how I add this. Maybe not that careful. Let's see. need all that. Let's do the same thing over here. Where's my station? This will be contaminated cosmic water instead, which I meant to do the first time. And could we just do it like this? No, the output's going to be a pain. Because two fluid outputs. You already did a contaminated cosmic water build. Did I?
cosmic... Yeah, it's part of the cosmic water. Well, why isn't it working? Oh, because contaminated bio sludge. Okay, so... So we do just need, um... Contaminated bio sludge. Uh, then why... Oh. Because we don't have enough fluid wagons. Um, in LTN, upstairs. I'm pretty sure we don't have any stuck trains. That's our construction train. This one... we do have some stuck trains. Because we didn't tell LTN how much super cool thermo fluid we have. Um, let's see. Did I... Did I put in a system to put super cool thermo fluid back in? I did not. But I could temporarily swap this around. Uh, let's see. Park yourself here. Wait till empty. And we'll turn these pumps around. And back to the depot, get reset. You're gonna have the exact same problem. That I, I think I know where our uh, where our fluid wagons went. I think I cracked the code. Any more? That one's fine. That one is... This one has oversupplied... Even though... What the hell? This doesn't have set train limit on it. Well, there's your problem. But that's one of the vanilla schedule trains, so it's not actually an issue. It only waits at the depot. Oh, I don't actually want a train limit here. No, this is fine. So it doesn't park itself in the depot when it really doesn't need to. Because this is the only train that sits here. just a bit confusing that I decided to do that uh, even though I had this set train limit thing here. I'm going to lunch. Take care, Lancer. Rayclaw, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Hello again. Seems I'm always joining when you're about to end the stream. Uh, no, we've got almost a couple of hours left. Alright, uh, I don't see... I think our, our fluid movement troubles are beginning to disappear. And speaking of which, we are receiving contaminated bio sludge. And that means contaminated cosmic water can move. Or it will be about to, anyway. Which means we can get blank data cards again soon. Fantastic. Maybe I should make more storage here. Whatever the case, it's working now. Is that one input here? Yeah, it does. Why is the left side so much slower? It's not that much slower. Oh. 
I don't think we're going to have trouble getting our Bio's Lodge loop started for the first time in this playthrough. I just have a... have a hunch. Okay, now what were we trying to do before we got sidetracked like that? I remember looking at the blank data cards because... We weren't getting them here to see our new build working. Alright, let me go deliver... How many speed modules do we actually need here? Uh, 72. I'm just going to go downstairs. Pick some up. Bottom right two machines not working on BioSludge. It's because the input containers aren't that full. So the fluid doesn't move as fast. So basically we get the opposite of diminishing returns. Um, the faster we put contaminated bio sludge in here, the faster it's going to process it because more fluid in the tanks, it'll move faster. Where was I going? To drop off speed modules. We've only built one of the four data cards for energy four. And then we chased a bunch of squirrels because we didn't have blanks. Alright, when do we get blanks? Fantastic. They might have some catching up to do, though. Nice base, thank you, Stargot. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And there's your name in base. Looking a little bit like a Star Wars text crawl. Okay. Uh... Maybe I could bump the priority on this. Because I really want to see it confirm that it's working. As soon as we get those blank data cards, I want them down here. Me too. Viking gamer, no worries. Uh... Okay. Name in base, name in space, indeed. In pajamas. Good to see you again also. Uh, I bet it could be paste, just to be safe. Viking Gamer. There we go. And... Should be just about ready to load a train. Nope, we need another 500. What's our theoretical max rate here? I think we're going at that max rate. It's only 15 per second. Which for data cards isn't that bad at this stage. Almost there. Almost there. And then light goes yellow, light goes yellow, light goes yellow. Oh, right. It's one of those. We're constantly pushing blanks to the front so that a short train can pick this up. Uh, so we set the pr uh, provide stack threshold a bit higher 
so that to account for stuff getting moved through the belt while the train is here. I do too if I'm not already up there. No worries. Alright, now we should get a train coming to pick this up. Right? I set it to a stack 110. We got Oh, this is still set up as if it as if we had the smaller trains. Ravna. So I didn't have quite as many as I thought I had. This should be the last stack before the light goes yellow. There we go. And it is indeed coming down here. Let's get rid of the ultra high priority. And awesome cut name in base. Fantastic. And I'd better mark people off the request list. There we go. Okay. Wow. That is a fast train. That really is a fast train. Looking good. Fantastic. All right. So that is superconductivity data. By the time we do another build, this will probably be saturated. Unless we run out of resources somewhere. Uh, superconductivity data. Oh, sushi belt, indeed. Can you do that? Yes, I can. Name in base. Oh, perfect. Fantastic. Lilejet. There we go. Wait you, wait, you need another blank data card production soon? Uh, yeah, but the physical inputs have been saturated for ages. The problem was actually getting rid of contaminated cosmic water. And that was busted because I wasn't dealing with contaminated biosludge yet. Captain True. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, time for another data card. There we go. Oh my goodness. Uh, and that's going to be quark data, and these all have the same shape, so as soon as we do one of these builds, it's going to be a copy and paste job for the rest of energy 3. Unless, of course, there's something I'm not anticipating. Means small heart in Norwegian, it's for my little girl. Oh, that's nice. Alright, we can only fit... really? We can only fit like eight of these around a big beacon. Hmm. Oh, and the inputs... Wait, is it two fluid outputs? No, we're good. But we need two fluid inputs. So... 
think we can do it like this. Yeah, this one's trickier than I thought. They all have two fluid inputs. Okay, so they will be the same shape. We will be able to copy-paste at it. But the initial build will be a bit trickier. Um, how far apart do we need to put them? Can we do the... Do they all use... Thermo fluid? They do. Let's put the thermo fluid input in the same place. Yeah, that'll work. Well, even if we squished them together, we could only fit four on each side. Or maybe eight if it was like this. Don't really want to do it that way. Um, but yeah, we've got plenty of room. So I guess it's going to look like this. Could be a bit closer together. Maybe. I think we need a 3B at least for that to reach. Make it a 5. And we do have blank data cards to input as well. Oh, you're kidding. We got a 7. I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Well, thermo fluid output is going to look something like this regardless. Maybe we should do fluid input something like this and just do belt input like so. So it's uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Nothing fits with 11, except 5 and 2 3s, I guess. Right? Pretty much has to be 5 double 3 for a consistent pattern. goes here, I think. Three, four. Seems good. And it's going to look a little bit different on the other side. Uh, 
don't suppose I could copy paste flip this. Maybe. No, these are... This side is going to be lined up all wrong. Seems okay. I don't hate this, as far as the least messy version of this you can make goes. Oh. How dare you. Do it like this. Give us a 3B. Okay. And we have two outputs that we'll have to filter. No big deal. Oh. No, we don't recycle anything. We only get 50% quark data. Quark data. But we don't have to, like, put it back into the machine or something. Easy enough. And drop-off station. Whoopsie. Daisies. There we go. Uh, once again, I think I will just leave room to double it. Instead of trying to be too clever about how fast we're going to need it to be. Two point seven cards per second is probably around what we're looking for anyway. Oh. Well, oh, they're slightly off. The sym symmetry gods must be appeased. Move everything down one tile? Yeah, one tile. And that goes there. Fantastic. Alright, so blank data. Just like this. We'll just summon a train when it's almost empty. I don't think we're going to be going through it that fast. 5.44 per second. Um, that needs to be request stack threshold 100. Can't mirror with three fluids, right? We need negative 273 degree thermo fluid and blank data cards. Um, 50, 100 is one train load. I'll set it to, like, that plus 10%. So 500 would take more than a minute. Uh, almost two minutes for it to run out before a train gets here with more blanks. We know how fast these trains are. So we need two fluid inputs for each of these builds. Uh, thermo fluid is only 54 per second and 108 
in this case, proton stream per second. So we'll do this layout, not worried too much about unloading the thermo fluid super fast. Although it would need, it would mean needing fewer um, fewer fluid trains overall. I could do the input and output belts in the middle. They are super slow. Which means I could have saved a bunch of space on the pipes. Whoops. There's only one solid input, right? Oh. It's fine. That can't fit there, though. I guess that's it. Um, for consistency's sake, put that there. Well, it's actually inconsistent either way, but this looks more consistent. Actually, couldn't we fit... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me some fives over here. So the middle ones are fives. Now it's symmetrical. Cool, cool, cool. Can't see it, but there are pipes here. And... I guess we can remove all of this. And move these in. actually just go there. Alright, that seems okay. So... The thermo fluids on the inside and the second fluids on the outside on both sides. How fast is it? Really slow, as far as pipe throughput is concerned. I could connect this over here, but I don't think I want to. Don't forget to connect these. And 25 degree thermo output, not going to be a problem. We do have a junk data card pickup as well. That can go there, along with the 25 degree thermo fluid. Where's my... Big containers. Okay. So these are going to crisscross, actually. It's fine. This is fine. Uh, is that a five? Must be. And then... Do 
this can go here. 9, 10, 11. Uh, 7 and 5 is 12. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It's got to be 5 and 2 3s again. That seems fine. And three, six, seven. Perfect. And I don't mind this, I suppose. All right, let's do some test inputs. See if we've missed anything. Doesn't look like it. Don't forget some blanks. I see movement. I think all the machines are working. Now we just have to do filtered output. Uh, assuming that we can fit... oh no. Uh, maybe we change the pipes in the middle. So this part seems pretty obvious. Let's run these in as far as we can. That's actually further than I was expecting. Just copy this. I feel like I did that backward. Pickup should come before output. That makes sense. Alright, and then we just need uh, to make these fluids connect in the most symmetrical way we can. I guess this will have to do. data cards and 25 thermo fluid output here junk data card 25 degree fantastic uh, we need the thermo fluid to come together somewhere which is looking a little less convenient than I thought. There we go. Something like this. And we'll do... How fast is this? Two point something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll do the old limit and three by three chest combo. Where's my splitters? Hobbist air splitter. There we go. So this is going to be... Quark, was it? Quark data. And then we just put loader here. Uh, 
and say no to junk. Junk is going this way, where we could probably do the same thing. Or we could use a splitter and not have a limit other than the size of the containers. Don't have loaders either. There we go. Actually, let's do it like this. How fast do we get the thermal float out? Pretty damn slowly. Even so, we've got all this space. Even if I doubled it, I could probably have a faster fluid pickup. That looks weirder from this side. It's not much better. Let's put it here. Did we configure this already? Kinda of did, mostly. And on this side, provide stack threshold 100. Short or long trains are fine. And this is for Quark data. And this is already done. What about the drop-off? Or, yeah, the drop-off. Long trains only, bunch of blanks, bunch of fluid. Considering that blanks will go through here, long or short doesn't really matter, but then short train would end up dropping uh, used up power packs in here from the locomotive. Alright, so this is a requester of blank data card, negative 273 degree thermofluid, and also, in this case, proton stream. That's going into particle watchamajiga, collider. And out comes quark data. And we're almost there. Tidy that up a bit. Once we're done with this, the next few builds are just going to be the exact same thing. With different recipes, different inputs but the exact same shape, I'm pretty sure. Tried to use a space elevator to invade a new planet. You can't really do it from orbit, you need to establish a space elevator on the ground to get the coordinates right. Uh, you can use, what is it, control alt click I think it is, uh, to ping somewhere and you can see the coordinates with that. Um, something else I was taught recently. Square bracket, square bracket, GPS, comma, uh, coordinates, comma, the name of the surface. 
square bracket. And I messed it up. Oh, it, no, it's GPS square brackets, I think. What? Or is it GPS equals? What was the syntax? Oh, is this it? There we go. What did I type? I can't see what I typed, because it just auto turns it into this. I'm pretty sure it was in the square brackets, GPS equals. Yes. Yes, indeed. So that way you can see exactly where the middle is. That is awesome. Indeed it is. Rutsky, welcome back. So glad I said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's always something to learn with these games. Always. It never ends. Where am I? Oh yeah, we were doing this build. And there's stuff all over the ground. There we go. Alright. Uh, that seems fine. We didn't save the blueprint yet, did we? I don't think so. By the way, it works similarly for other things. Enter into game chat. Armor equals Tyrannosaurus hacks? Wait, what would that do? Armor equals... Hold on, let me save real quick. I was trying to establish it by putting down a pin, so I was getting the coordinates. I think the problem is that without putting it on the ground right, it can't match up to Echoes in space. Indeed. Oops. hope that bump wasn't too bad. Armor. Huh. Well, there you go. Show off your armor in multiplayer. Alright. I think this is done. Is it done? I hope so. Oh, and... Right on stream. There we go. And the station name, I think we did that already. Yes, we did. Alright, so this is Quark Data. Quark Data? Quark Data? Quark Data. Snap to Grid. And we're good. Next is... Uh, which one was it? What's this called? Entanglement data. So we're going to leave these in exactly the same place, change the recipe, uh, change nothing but the fluid input. And I am just realizing how I didn't finish that last blueprint. Okay, we just need the output fluid to find its way over here. That's all. How many tiles is that? Six, make it seven, or how about a couple of nines maybe? That's not going to reach. Train equals 10. He needs a train ID. Uh, how many times would this be? 5. And double 15. 
I mean double nine. Does that reach? One off. It's one off, isn't it? Yep. Uh, uh. I could put a pump in as if I wanted to do that all along. Let's see, 18, 21. You could do three sevens. There we go. There we go. Just as planned. Um, I can't really do update blueprint because bulk rail loaders that are side on. Don't play nicely with select new contents. Eighty six twenty five one. And that should be our build. Cool, cool, cool. Now, we update the recipe. We update the request for fluid. And the junk output is the same. Or at least uh, the types are the same. And entanglement data goes down here. And then just update the station name. Change this from green to blue. And this thing to entanglement. And that's it. That's our... I mean, we could test it. Wanna test it? Let's test it. That's Proton, you buffoon. Okay. Out with the green, in with the blue. Fantastic. And it's working. Beautiful. So let's blueprint that. And this is entanglement data. And we're done. And one more. Input fluid is particle stream. Uh, request particle stream. What's this called? Lap, lap, lepton data. Can't read right now. Lepton. That E really looks like an A when my vision is ever so slightly blurred. Okay. Lepton data. Fantastic. Seems to be working just fine. Does this thing not have blanks? Great, so the other blueprint or two is missing one piece of belt. It's fine. I'm not going to update the blueprint just for that. Um, and we need to change... Did I already do it? Lepton. No, this is... This is lepton. And this is... Particle stream. The age reminding you that you are mortal? Uh, as much as it is that, it's been really hot lately, and I haven't had... Except at, like, 
4 a.m. I haven't had clear thoughts or anything like that for the last few days. All right. Fastest blueprint ever, indeed. Okay, uh, let me just try and double check this despite my foggy brain. Looks pretty good. If there's a mistake, it's going to be easy to fix. Let's blueprint it. And that was lepton data, right? All right. There we go. And that is all of the data cards for Energy Science 3. Time to build them. Well, the last three of them. So quark data goes here. Uh, I'm pretty sure... Huh. I didn't notice the little bit of space left in there. That's actually fine. Uh, all of these have the same profile, so I'll just use the same blueprint to copy-paste those. Let's get our scaffolding train to pay this general area a visit as many times as it takes. Hopefully only one or two. Because I can't actually queue it up to do three trips. And have it automatically return to its usual schedule. GPS equals zero zero Nalvis. Yes indeed. Oh, what was the other thing you were saying about Nalvis? For some reason, specifying Nalvis' surface name isn't working, but its default surface, so with last argument removed, it works. Huh. Middle of winter here in England would love some heat. I'll trade you. It's, uh... I, I can pretty much take the heat, like, even even when it gets up to 40 degrees, for a little while. It's not so much the heat as it is the relentless heat. Literally only getting down to, like, 26 degrees Celsius at the coldest parts of the whole day. And by day, I mean 4 or 5 a.m. How do you make the construction train with that much robot reach? Uh, something that came with K2, I believe, called... Yeah, it's Crestroyo 2. Vehicle, RoboPort. Um, the short answer is you stack a lot of RoboPorts, but uh, the vehicle RoboPorts, I think, get more distance than if we put in four personal RoboPorts. AC on full blast. Uh... I've got the AC maxed out, which is to say I don't have any AC. It's at zero. It's literally... <laughs> it's literally against the rules to have AC here. Cool and normal. Flowers are already blooming in Belgium. Spring began 1.5 months too early. Comforting thoughts. Alright. Um, I don't actually want the scaffolding that's underneath this for no reason. Alright. Time to bring... I was going to say time to bring the construction train, but first I'll just place the blueprints. Wrong one. There we go. Construction train, you are up. 
Wait, why is... Oh. Wait, what? Oh, because it, it places solar panels, I forgot. Scaffolding train is still here. It's fine. Alright, we'll park construction train in the middle. Wait till inactivity. And then go resupply and do it again. Because it'll probably take more than one trip. It'll definitely take more than one trip because I didn't even ask it to bring particle colliders. Of which we need uh, 4, 8, 16, 24. I'll just go get them myself, I think, while the construction train is doing things. Wait, don't they stack to only one? I've only got like eight stacks in my inventory right now. Uh... We'll see how many we can fit in the train. Particle. I haven't actually done these here before. Maybe I've removed them. 24. I haven't done any laser facilities in a while. Don't know why we're stacking those. Don't need electric boilers all that often. I have the... Don't forget that one belt you need to place for the two blueprints. Good catch, thank you. Fantastic. We're almost at a trainload of superconductivity data. Unless it's already been delivered up here. Uh, that's actually tier 2. Oh, I haven't done the tier 3 and 4 build for this yet. But it's basically just a copy-paste edit. Um, I think I'll put it here. Oh, no, I should put it right next to the science. Let's jump into... Well, first let's go back. Oh, the bots. Poor little guys. Are those my personal bots? I don't think so. My personal RoboPod is switched off, and they're not green on the map. So they're not going to get banished to the Shadow Realm if I jump into the editor. Alright. Let's grab that blueprint. Energy 1 and 2 catalog. Did you upgrade the scaffolding train? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. So, 1 is going to become 3. Comprehensive catalog. And 2 is going to become 4. Extended catalog. And then we just change these inputs and train LTN signals and stuff. Superconductivity. Uh, superconductivity quark. Entanglement and lepton. Flip that around. Yep, that's all correct. Quark. Entanglement. Lepton. Uh, and it's all negative 100 still, right? 
Nope, this is negative 273. Oh. Oh. Oh, good. I was afraid this would be quick and easy. One, and a two, and a three, and four, and five. There we go. You've ordered 124 particle colliders, not 24? Is that so? <laughs> So I did. I don't think we can even fit 24 anyway. We don't need electromag facilities right now. That puts us up to 20. And I could drop the flat solar panels. At least for the moment. We have to empty those one at a time just to not overshoot and loop. One more stack. Alright, that'll do. Park yourself here and wait for inactivity. Actually, I probably should have got it to empty itself so the bots jump back in first. Whoops. It's fine. Alright, so I need to do the same song and dance for... Oh, also I want to update this name. Uh, tier 3 catalog. And... Does it come out at 25 degree? Thermofloat still? It does. And this one is going to be tier 4. Alright, so now all I have left is this stuff. The last four data cards. Boson data. Fusion test data. Magnetic monopole data and star probe data. And it's negative 273 degree thermofluid, not negative 100. And all that's left is updating the station name. Alright, one and a two. And a three. And a four. And that's it. Until we want to replace them with faster machines. Um, that's our catalog build. T hacks how far until deep science? I think balancing spheres will be tricky to do at speed. Depends how fast we're going, I guess. Why are we bonking? Combinator mist. The star probe data? Ugh. Thank you. Boson, fusion, magnetic, star probe. Fantastic. Okay. Blueprint. Catalog three and four. Files, train stop names, snap to, and Wadonski. Right. Did you do filter loaders out of rail? Oh crap. No, you're right. Uh, fine. I have to do the blueprint from scratch again, but that's okay. Boson. 
that slept on it. Boson, uh, fusion. Magnetic and star probe. Copy the paste flip. And now we blueprint. Catalog three. It's so easy but such a pain doing these some of these copy paste builds. Once you've done one of them. Energy catalog. Three plus four. We done ski now. Let's hope so. Alright. So I want to park that right about here. Once again, we'll need our scaffolding train. Are you okay? Oh no. Uh, minor detail. I didn't do the pipes wrong, but I did forget to check which fluid is being delivered. We can fix it. Um, before we do, let's get scaffolding train over here. Actually, let me take the faster train. Look at it go. Well, Remind yourself that overconfidence indeed. is indeed and insidious killer. Indeed it is. Right, so the thing that I should have done uh, before the trains arrived is we're looking for a negative one signal. You can see it here. The train is trying to drop off a uh, super cool thermo fluid. So it's giving me a negative one signal from the logistic train stop output for that. So we're just going to do that is less than zero. And for the stuff that goes here. Okay. But... We need to pump all of this into one of the one of the sets of pipes. Should I go about it? Over here? I need the construction train because I don't normally carry these pipes. Alright, construction car where are we? About here. Please wait there indefinitely. And we need a pump. Quick as we can, please. And I'm going to need to do the same thing three times. Wait, that one is 20. Uh, that's, that's, needs to be the other way around. There we go. And this one goes this way. Alright. Hopefully we can get every last bit of proton stream out of there. I think I want to move the train so that the pumps can't take from it while we're fixing this. 
because I'm going to want to get the 500 um yeah just like that the 500 proton stream out of the pumps as well all right what's our rate here 70 per second and dropping 2.5k left in here that's not so good Let's go check on the other ones. That accelerates so quick. And this one already doesn't have a train here. Oh, if I didn't already, I really should have turned off these constant combinators. But since we're already able to detect the fluids, it probably won't cause problems. Alright. Oh, it's dropping. 700. 650. 600. It's going to get slower, but it's not going to take too long. Hopefully we can actually get every last drop out of these pipes. I need more wide area beacons. Oh, we've got 55 up here. Are they not being put in the construction train? I guess not. I'm a little surprised by that. I have an idea. I think at some point laser will get so much damage it'll be easy to destroy space rocks. Wait, which laser are we talking about? The energy beam or just like regular lasers? Laser turret. 140, 135, 130. Laser turrets for spaceships. Yes. It'll take a lot of research, though. Oh, now we're down to decimals being visible. About down here. 80 left. This one's done, actually. Fantastic. Where am I going? All right, this one's fixed. And which fluid is this? Particle stream. Have we even done particle stream? I imagine... No, actually. Let's see if I'm right. We haven't done particle stream. No energy three for us just yet. Alright. But I think we can bring that train back now. Oh, that was the one that the train already left. Uh, we're down to 10. 9. Keeps getting slower. 8. How about the other one? 8.5. What a tease. I'm beginning to think the double pumps weren't that silly, actually. I want to see if it'll actually suck out every last bit of particle stream from this side of the pipe network. Load network. Otherwise, I'll just have to delete some, which is no big deal. If not for my curiosity about whether this will work, um, I would say it's definitely not worth player time. I mean, that's pretty obvious. Yeah, I think that's it. I think it can't pump anymore. Okay. 
delete and he may return. That should already be set up correctly. Fantastic. And down here, same deal. Uh, this should be once again set to negative 273 degree thermofluid less than zero. Or you could set it to equals negative one. Either way is fine. Auto save. Aren't pumps in parallel better than in series, throughput-wise? Uh, yeah, I didn't really have a good spot to squeeze another one in. For the temp pumps. But what really slows down fluids in Factorio is the number of pipe segments that they have to go through before a pump or a consumer or something. So, having a pump instead of, like, two pieces of pipe, especially when we have so few pieces over here, um, believe it or not, could make a pretty big difference. Alright, we should be able to turn these back on now. And now we need to make particle stream. I also need to place some speed modules and such. I thought I got rid of these. Of course the construction train is calling dibs on that. Now the bots are going to be stuck. Pipe slash pump throughput explained, including speed table, indeed. We've done the experiments before, setting up circuit timers as well, to prove it. Fluid in Factorio is very odd. Uh, it's extremely viscous, it doesn't like to move. Alright, what are we missing? Blank data, oh no. Well, blank data is moving at least. I dare say if everything was moving at speed, um, our 15.2 blank data cards per second wouldn't be keeping up with our base so far. <laughs> Anyone remember fluid mechanics in the early days of Factorio? Uh-oh. That sounds spooky. Let's see, I have... Quark data to tag. And then... Entanglement data. Why can't I place it sometimes? Oh, is it actually that it needs to be explored? Surely not. Leptin data, leptin data. Let me try and place a tag over here. Nope, oh, I can absolutely place a tag where we haven't explored yet. Okay. Uh, and then we need to build this. Energy 3 and 4. Construction train's a little out of range. Oh, and this would be the one time that I actually disabled loading up the research servers. Whoops. How many do we actually need? Well, 25 is a stack anyway. 50 is a stack, actually. 
but 25 is plenty. Fluids in games in general are a whole menagerie of interesting behaviors, yeah. I mean, because to simulate them accurately, or somewhat accurately, it's very UPS intensive, right? So the question is, what kind of weird approximation are you going to go for? Do I want to go back yet? There might be something here I can help with directly. Oh, we're already dropping off uh, data cards here. Wait, what data cards are those? Superconductivity. Okay, that's actually correct. Fantastic. What? Oh no. No, 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 no. Super cool doesn't go there. That was my mistake. It's fine, we'll just put extra super cooled in here. Or I could send it back to the... where it came from. Gases works pretty good in stationaires. Oh yeah? Wait, didn't I get the construction train to... Okay. Alright, how about you just... Wait, why are the trains not able to come here? Because there's no pair of signals up here? And normally it wouldn't be a problem because we drop off so quickly. All right. That's not actually going to work. Um, how about... Go here. Get out of this guy's way. They treat water like a gas, so you can compress it. Is that why... You can compress water in oxygen not included? Like, not that they thought that's a thing that you could do, but it's using some of the same code. Uh, oh good, we had another train scheduled to... Why do we have two tra... I don't understand how we got two trains scheduled to drop off 60k each for 100k requests. Even if that 100k request was wrong. Oh, wait, no, it's the same train. I forgot to, like, tell it to drop off at this station instead. Whoops, that's a relief, actually. First train doesn't have a timeout. LTN thinks it's dead sends another. That is precisely one of the traps um, that I warn against with default settings with LTN. I've had that happen. Ended up with like 10 trains queued up to drop off at one station that was set to train limit one. Oh, we don't have room for this because particle colliders... There we go. Do we carry modules? No. Kappa Beast. And also Yaman, by the way. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Xe, welcome also. Both Oni and Stationers calculate fluids by cells. The quirk for Oni is that there can be only one type of fluid per cell. Yeah, it's really weird. While station is allows for any ratio mixing. Hmm. That's interesting in that you can't do the liquid locks and stuff. But like, I'm sure anyone who knows a decent amount of chemistry must be screaming internally when they see certain 
certain fluids sharing space and like not exploding or something. Where's my construction train? It's going back already. What? 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 Did I forget where I actually sent it? What's going on there? Come back. Well, come back after you've reloaded. The quirk for station is, is that any pipe network equalizes content pressure temperature instantly and one event in is enough to interface with one voxel cell. I read a question on Discord if it's possible to recover lost Arcospheres. Player later detailed that they had collect a setup wrong and they were launching collected spheres. <laughs> oh no. In stationaries, explosives, atmosphere mixes can indeed explode. That's interesting. Alright, what's our train doing? It's not quite fully loaded. Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, and it has to wait for S equals zero, so it's not going to accidentally come early. How much scaffolding is it looking for? 200. Why is it so slow? Because all the scaffolding is in here. Andy Gaming, thank you, uh, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? That's going to be a bit slow. Let's skip it for now. Alright, here comes our train. Oh, you do T-hacks? Uh, good, except for the heat, basically. Let me check the temperature according to the bureau. Uh, at 10.30pm, it is still 34.5 degrees. Nice. Celsius, by the way, in case any of you are confused. All right. Looks like we got it built. We haven't got the recipe yet for Catalog 4, but that's okay. Fantastic. The construction train needs to move over. Fuck this over here for now. And hurry up and put those speed modules in. There we go. Alright, well, superconductivity data at least is already good to go. And probably halfway to full over here for another load. Uh, we haven't made any quark data because we don't have blanks. We haven't made any entanglement data because we don't have blanks. And we haven't made any le lepton data because we don't have blanks and because we haven't made particle stream yet. So why don't we make some particle stream? Friends in New Zealand having quite bad floods, but at least it's cooler. Oh no. I've been through flooding. I do not care to repeat it. But I'm sure the climate won't care. Alright, let's do... As I recall, this is a pretty damn simple build. Um, a particle stream, was it? The pink one? 
purplish one. Article stream. Particle stream. How, how do we make the particle stream? There we go. Too damn many material testing packs. Probably. Uh, it's actually 30 seconds for one material testing pack. Even so, we should probably put this build really close to the space elevator. Let's see how fast it's going to be. We need some optical accelerators. Those are huge. One fluid in, one fluid out, and a couple of solids. Beacon. Oh. Should have thought of that before I made this mess. You know what? Just, uh... This will be easier. Okay. How many of these do we fit? Probably the same number as the last thing. Is that actually centered? Yes, it is. That is not centered. And then... What kind of rate are we looking at? Oh, less than one per second? Even with all the speed that we've got so far? That's pretty good. Can we fit some more in that case? Probably. Well, we could definitely do 50% more on one side. Yeah, I think that'll be fine. Why has it got to be nine tiles wide, though? I could do threes. If I do seven, seven, and this would two, which doesn't work, unless we do pumps. Loads aren't going to be that fast. Don't have to worry about it. You know what? Fine. Let's do threes. Just so it fits together nicely. So we're going to do... I was thinking of doing the input on this side. We could do input output down the middle. Oh, there's no solid output. Even better. So input here and input here maybe. Um, I would need a long arm that would reach to the rail. Let's not do it that way. Do the old three plus undergrounds. And then this one reaches directly. I might just do that on the input side as well. On the second thought. Yeah, yeah, rolling stock. Okay. There's just two physical inputs, right? We can do a half belt. Yep, sand is like less than seven per second. Uh, I think I would like to put this a little bit closer over here. Why 
why I replaced the one three pipe with two single pipes? Isn't one segment better? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's the same. It's the same number of segments. One, two, three, four. And second thought, maybe I'll move it over a tile. We are going to need solid drop-off and fluid drop-off and wasn't I going to do the solid input over here actually? That makes more sense I think. Since the consumption is quite slow, and it's only two inputs, uh, I think we could do the same thing again. If we only request up to 150 stacks of each solid... Uh, let's see... 1000, that is 100 stacks. That must be 150. And send. Um, double it. And add a decimal place. 3,000? No, wait. Uh, 30,000. 30, Is that right? 150 stacks, yes. And the input fluid is plasma stream. Plasma stream. Your counting reminded me of counting you did when fighting boss. One, two, three, swap, indeed. One, two, three, stop. One, two, teleport dead. I was not expecting the out of turn attack from outside of the map when I accidentally reached space against all the worthy Duke Fishrum. Uh, we got him eventually and farmed the hell out of him. Alright, so I want... Actually, oh, whatever, it's fine. This is in an awkward spot. It's not going to look nice. I want to go... something like this. But then I can't really move everything over one tile. It's not going to work if I do it towards here either. I'd have to move two tiles over. Or maybe one tile over if I swap this. Yeah, I think I like that. Just swap these around. That lines up with this. Very neatly. Uh, I can't really use a delivery cannon chest because... Because of the two different resources. What's the best way to do this? I'm surprised I haven't thought of it yet. Two different solids coming from both containers. We want one on one side, one on the other side. Splitters might be involved. 
I feel like this is going to get out of hand. Well, rather than a splitter, I could just use the filter to begin with. What if that was like that, and that was like that, and then we just merge it? Yeah, I think I've done that before, actually. Alright, so... Material testing pack. And send. Material testing pack on the right. That should just be copy-paste, no flipperino. Yeah, that should be all it takes. Alright, let's test. One, two, he's coming after you. Three, four, he's knocking at your door. I forgot how it goes. Soon may the fish run come. Alright, we're gonna put red wire... So we just measure the contents of one container. Set filters blacklist. And then shift right click, shift left click. And that's how we get our test input. Uh, we also need it over here, so I should actually use this splitter. As in, don't filter that. Unless I want to run the belt back up here, which I could. Uh, we still need to do... No, we don't. I was going to say we still need to do the second fluid input, but there's no such thing. Alright. Let's see where this is going to fit. Probably something like this. Actually, I should have put that down here. The Stitches, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, where's my space pipe? Space. There we go. And then that still doesn't reach, actually. Huh. How many tiles do we need to make that look good? figures. And there's no way to make that look good. It's four tiles. That one has a similar problem. Oh well, at least it's kind of symmetrical. Alright, what's this? Four tiles? Five? That looks decent. Oh, wrong one. Nope, 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 nope. Um, plasma stream. That's surprisingly slow. But it does make 200 particle stream per recipe. Now we just need only one output. How luxurious. There's no junk data cards or 25 degree thermo fluid to pick up. Well, wonders never cease. And I think I want to make sure we've got Decent storage for this. Not just 200k. Hmm. How 
I do I want to do it? Is that going to reach? I mean, it's going to reach, but what I'm really thinking about is this the pump there. What's our rate? Uh, 272 per second. That's fine. Oh, we're one off if we do that? How about... no. That fit. Seems good. So I'll have a nice fast train load and we've got honestly pretty ludicrous storage for particle stream. But we need that stuff to make like antimatter among other things. So I really don't mind accumulating a bunch of it. I'll leave room to double this which will be quite easy to do. And remove excess scaffolding, add a little bit of it back so it doesn't look quite so tacky. Hurry up, map save. How's this? Maybe a bit much. There is a very friendly moth. That's harassing me. Alright. That seems okay. Did I miss anything? Y yes, I did. Not sure how that happened, actually. Hmm, surely we could. Do something like that. Oh, seems a bit. I don't know. That seems fine, actually. I can live with that. Alright, particle stream. What am I doing? Particle stream, particle stream. Particle stream, provider. Uh, provide threshold 60k. Short trains are permissible. We should be able to load that up quite quickly. Alright, blueprint time, I hope. Didn't name the station yet. Uh, I did set the requests pretty well. Okay, I think that's it. We are requesting material, sand, uh, and proton stream, plasma stream. Goes into particle, big blue, what's it? Accelerator, and out comes particle stream. Now we blueprint. Uh, 
Typical stream. And snap two. I think I already removed the cheat items. We're going to need 52 speed modules. Snap 2 looks good. Don't know where to put this now. Right next to the ion stream and stuff. Alright, where are we building it? Um, even though their consumption is pretty slow... Oh, here it is. That's material testing packs right there, actually. So, how many other things in energy science consume testing packs? Atomic data? Did we already do that? Particle stream. Yeah, I think that's it. Pretty sure we did do atomic data. Yeah, there it is. Keep these two fairly close to the testing packs. Make for nice short trips. That's that's not where I wanted to put it. I'm kind of reserving a three by three in each direction from the space elevator, or diagonally, more or less. I, I can move this. Although it'll be a pain. Uh, but I'm kind of trying to... Oh no, I broke my rule. <laughs> I was trying to reserve that space for... Stuff that comes up the elevator. Or goes down it for that matter. It's fine. This is fine. Wait for inactive. Activity. Construction train. You can tell it's full because it says it's got the S signal. S equals zero. Wait for inactivity. And I forgot to tell it to get particle what's it? Let's fix that super fast. Particle accelerator. Uh, I can't remember how many we need. Hopefully 15 is enough. I think it's 12, isn't it? It's probably 12. finished. Nice. Off you go. And then particle stream goes here. And do I have speed modules? Not that many. I think there are none left up here now. Yeah. I could steal some from some of these but don't need to go so fast anymore. But... Well... No. Actually, these ones... I need, like, 54. Oh, aren't we delivering? No, it's fine. This is fine. Let's catch a ride. Very, very quickly. And 
Fantastic. And there's our speeds. Alright, is there a reason we're not getting this stuff delivered? Probably because I left the combinator switched off. Beautiful. Material testing packs are already on their way. See how long they take to get here. That's pretty quick. Which is what you want for such an absurdly small stack size. Now why don't we have sand? Do I not have sand, like, brought up the space elevator? That wouldn't surprise me. I think I'll have to add it. Surely this won't be the only sand consumer at scale up here. We're going to want to benefit from productivity modules. So there's particle stream. There's Vitam Lunge Bloom. That's going to be on the ground for prod modules, I think. Pyroflux, Spiralium Ingot, other ingots, Quartz, Landfill, Matter. Nothing. Hmm. No, I'm not going to be tempted to turn stone into sand with no prog bonuses. Instead of bringing it up. Jean, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we could put sand here. Easy peasy. Set that to everything to make it actually work. And now I need to train. And I think that's it. Although I might have to add some conditions to control the pickup schedules down on the ground. Or I could do an LTN to vanilla, like drop off and pick up near the elevator. If I really want to. It doesn't have to be near the elevator. Alright, so we are making a train with vanilla schedule. it that speed and efficiency boost. Alright. Wait, what? So this goes here? Yes. One second inactivity is enough. And where should we pick up sand from? Sure. Wait till full cargo. And that's pretty much it. Let's see where it goes. I might... Uh... I might have to update one of the stations to set train limit. Or all of them. I don't know how many stations I've got called sand provider. Probably only where we are going out of our way to make sand. Why is that still set to five seconds? I could have sworn I changed this to one second. Wait, what? Oh, did I... Wait, what? Hold on. Hold, hold, hold on a minute. Am I hallucinating or something? 
I could have sworn that said Holmium Cable. Uh, did I, like, click on a different train? I don't know what's going on. Yeah, I think this is our only station called Sand Provider. Or there might be one... Nope, this is what I was thinking of. I could set it to do the train limit thing, or we could just let the vanilla train loop until it's satisfied. This does have negative pickup priority, because there's so many things that make sand as a byproduct. The hell? It wasn't just me? Okay. I was beginning to think... My brain was really starting to play tricks on me. Um, but yeah, there's our sand. And it's going to take one more train load before it triggers a delivery. Um, it's not going to take long to get here, though. I give it about five seconds before the train's here again. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe eight or nine seconds. If it didn't stop at the depot, it definitely would have been there by five seconds. Uh oh, we've run out of sand. With our mere eight machines churning through 48 stone per second for 158 sand per second. Wait, I've only got three belts? Oh no, there's a fourth one over here. One, two, three, four, and then one, two. That makes sense. Oh, this is supposed to have a limiter here. Good thing I checked. Oh. Forgot to do that with explosives. Uh, also forgot to do it with energy control unit. I had no idea we had so many. Uh, let's check. Locomotives are fine. Alright. So it looks like we've got enough... It's, it's 200 per stack, that's why this is taking so long. Uh, but it looks like we've got enough... To summon a train? Maybe not, actually. Oh, is this thing waiting to drop off? Yeah, 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 yeah. So the second train load hasn't come here yet because this stuff takes so long to drain. In which case, uh, I think I'll make a little exception. For a stack size 200, that's probably what we should be doing. Let's get our construction train to visit just for a moment. Alright, there should be an LTN train. Uh, once a few more stacks of sand drain in here, actually. Once it reaches 120, which is honestly, especially with the 200 stack size, definitely more than we need. Let's make it 110. Here's our train. Don't squish me. Don't, don't squish me. 
I was afraid of... Uh, I was seeing my life flash before my eyes. I thought that was going to happen again. Alright, so this should be our first particle stream. For the whole playthrough. In we go. And here it goes. Uh, we have no plasma stream. Did I forget to request it? No. Output is full. Provide threshold 60k. It's detected. Uh, request threshold 60k. Plasma stream negative 100 thousand. Are we short on fluid wagons up here? Is it that bad? Particle stream on stream, indeed. I'm just going to crank the prio on this. And if that solves the problem, uh, it tells me I really need to hurry up and do more fluid wagons up here. Combinator is on... Request threshold 60k. Long train, plasma stream, negative 100k. Also, I forgot this again. If you caught it. Uh, cryo super high. Particle stream, 200k. Provide threshold 60k. Trains for LTN message. Yeah. It's pretty clear we're not just playing catch-up at this point. Alright. Actually, have we really not had a fluid wagon go to the depot? Are they stuck? They're stuck. Why are you like this? Because... Wait, why, why are you like this? Ion stream less than zero. Ion stream negative one. Red wire only touches these. Oh, they are, they are active. The pumps are active. There's a, t uh, there's a thousand. Why is there a thousand super cool thermo fluid in here? I thought we emptied that. That's all it was. I do believe we only have two uh, long fluid trains in this system. Rip 2000 super cold thermo fluid. Some left in tanks, clean out the remainder, indeed. And it looks like this is working. Fantastic. In goes the stream, and out comes the stream. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And with that, uh, with that we're still, oh, I was going to say we're still going to be waiting on blank data cards, but actually we got some blanks here. So we're going to get our first uh, lep lepton data shortly. We're getting our first entanglement data. We've already had this one, uh, superconductivity, and we're waiting on blanks for quark data. And blanks are moving. Very nice. Very good. So... Energy 3... Probably done? Probably? Wait, that's the wrong... That's not what, quite where I wanted that to go. Energy 3 catalog goes here. Why doesn't it click? There we go. And extended would go here. 
Fantastic. Alright. So how fast is this? 272 per second. Uh... is just under four minutes. How long till we get the blank data cards? Not that long. Should we wait for our first catalog threes? Or is it going to turn out to be much longer than I thought? Why don't I make a couple of trains well, we do. Let's add like five fluid wagons. That should be more than enough for a little while. Oops. Um, five. Oops. And that goes there. That goes there. And we just need to send it to the depot. Uh, where's is it Depot 2? I want to double check. Yeah, Depot 2. Oh, it's doing this thing again. There we go. We'll blueprint that real quick. Space fluid wagon. How about we just three, four, and five? What's the worst that could happen? Oh, we're out of additional electric engines? Really? I think I had a machine dedicated to those, but I got rid of it. Maybe not the best choice. How many of these do we have? Uh, 134 in storage, that's good. Alright, so you... Ready to go. Let me just copy your schedule. Oh, I, I want it to be blue, I think, for the fluid ones. Yeah, let's copy this. Maybe not that many. Uh, we need 10 per... 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh-oh. Well, I can get the solar panels in place, I guess. And I 
don't suppose. Oh, output would probably help. Output would pr probably help. Okay, these two should be ready, right? go and off you go and then I need seven of these why are we not getting them made automatically some of these. And the back. So slow. Oh, we've got some here. Oh, that's only two. Three, four, five. Alright. Uh, how's our... Coronal mass ejection heading for Isabella, which we haven't even looked at. How's our data cards? Nice. Quark data incoming. Leptin data incoming. Uh, what's this? Entanglement data. We do have some already. It's just going to take a long time to get the blank data cards, I think, for the moment. That's okay. But yeah, I'm pretty sure there could be some little error or two, but I'm pretty sure uh, Tier 3 energy catalogs are fully automated, and we've already done all of this. So we're literally just waiting on those comprehensive energy catalogs to get tier 3 uh, energy science. Now we just need to do the same thing for Astro, and we can do... what was it, actually? Energy beam? For starters? Oh, we need material 3 as well for that, damn it. What was it that Energy 3, uh, Energy Science Pack 3, and like Astro 3 gave us? There was something really cool, wasn't there? Maybe I'm wrong. You need life support? Uh oh. Well, that's uh, that's about as good a moment as any to probably finish the stream for today anyway. I'm just going to cram a couple more engines into these trains, get them started. Uh, one more set of batteries, please. And we'll do the other two off stream, I guess. This guy's trying to move to the left, though. Let's just put you on manual for now. Alright, let's see who's streaming, who we're going to raid today. Raid today. Raid. We've got Brain, perhaps? SE playthrough ep 18. Seems good. Sure, that'll do. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And till next time, stay safe. Take care, Scobix. Thanks for the warning. Actually, I should get in a train or something so it stops counting down. Was that four seconds left? Veldak, Fatboy, thanks for hanging out. 
see you next time. We will be continuing with space exploration tomorrow. Take care, Evil Plot. And everyone else as well. See you next time. Hey, 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 Tyrannosaurus Hacks, how you doing?